Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to Dev Chatter. My name is Brendan, and if you read the title of this stream, uh, you probably know that I'm making a joke. Uh, the internet right now is uh, a little abuzz about the uh, <clears throat> the idea of the, the, the 10x engineer uh, based on someone tweeting something. So if you're on Twitter in the developer uh, community on there, you probably got a good laugh about that one. Uh, welcome everyone, glad to see people saying hi in the chat. Hopefully you're having a pretty nice Saturday so far. It is uh, pretty nice in the afternoon, a little warm today, but uh, other than that, not bad. Uh, good day to be inside and writing some code, uh, or if you are so inclined and have a nice shady spot outside and writing some code. Uh, but hopefully it's something you enjoy. Uh, so, first off, uh, I'm going to make sure I say hi to the people that said hi in chat. Hey SNB, welcome Mr. Shoji, hello, hello. And if I butcher anyone's name, let me know. Hey Ace Flames here, glad to see you there. And uh, Code Monkey Dave, greetings. Welcome everyone. We are going to be doing a little bit of coding today. And uh, for anyone that is new or hasn't said hi in chat, hello, welcome. Uh, feel free to ask questions uh, or make suggestions, comments, anything like that while we're coding. Uh, obviously, we are a community of developers, not like a yes, I might host the live stream, but we are very much a community here on Dev Chatter. Uh, along those lines, if you haven't yet, uh, be sure to join our Discord as it is a great place to engage with all of us, as there are literally hundreds of us in the Discord uh, that chat about things from time to time. So if you've got a, a you know, whatever tech uh, or programming related uh, thing you want to chat about, it's a good spot for it. Uh, so let's see. Um, we try to do a fairly regular stream here, writing code. Most of what we do is C Sharp and JavaScript. Um, we're .NET Core almost exclusively. We've done only very little of anything that isn't that. Um, other things. Uh, oh, if you don't, if you're not uh, someone that's inclined to talk in chat, don't talk in chat. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to say anything. We won't even acknowledge you're here. Uh, that's totally cool. So if you just want to sit back and watch, that's great. Uh, other announcement I want to make. If uh, you are not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, I have been putting out a series on there called Dev Chatter Basics. Uh, I'm trying to do like one episode a week of Dev Chatter Basics. They're going to be much shorter than a live stream, but again, it's you know, planned out, edited, you know, curated content kind of thing. And so uh, if you do want to check those out, uh, they are designed for either beginner programmers to get a nice foundation on some of the concepts in C Sharp, uh, or for more experienced developers to get a refresher and reminder of some of these things that are really foundational for the stuff that we program. Uh, so good stuff all around. Um, we've done an episode now on extension methods and an episode on types. And uh, I'm planning on doing one on interfaces, definitely going to do some stuff on architectures of projects. Uh, and there are just a variety of topics that uh, I think are going to be uh, great for that sort of thing. Might do other types of videos in there as well, uh, in addition to those bits on, on, the, on the YouTube channel. We'll see how it goes. Uh, speaking of that, it is also where we have archives of our previous like 200 some episodes of our live stream. Uh, so you can catch all of that over there. Today we are going to be working on the code that we have been uh, sort of building for a little while now. It is our Final Fantasy VII interaction, but we're going to be doing something interesting today. So rather than adding in a new feature, <laughs> uh, Equation Child, I'm uh, glad you brought it up. The 10X is actually just a tongue-in-cheek little joke there uh, because, um, let's see, uh, some kind of benchmark for productivity practice like testing, which informs that. No, no, no. Yeah, it is totally a joke. A hey, Desert Griffin. Uh, the, 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 the 10X is, is just a joke. Uh, right now on Twitter, there's lots of discussions about this concept of like the 10X engineer because uh, someone posted a. Yeah, so, someone posted a thing. I just thought it would be funny to put it in the episode title uh, about like how to identify the 10X engineer. And uh, someone. Yeah, exactly. Yes! Yes, Equation Child has hit exactly the point. So the person that they described... Now, the interesting thing is, there's not actually anything wrong with the type of developer. So if, 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 so if you read... There's a thread on Twitter. If you read that thread and it applies to you, I just want to let you know that the community is not making fun of you, not laughing at you, anything like that. Uh, it is just a specific... Like, it is describing a specific type of individual that's not usually, like, the 
best team person is usually what's described there, and they're not always good for the longevity of the project either. So that type, like a developer that, that behaves like that one does is super useful in certain places. And so if you are the kind of developer that can just sit down and just code something, you know, just like that and just like rip it, you know, just like, boom, I've got a thing. A lot of times the developers that, that are like that, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but usually that's the code that like is not the longevity code. That's the, hey, I spiked a proof of concept to show that this could work. Most of the time when you're done, you're like, oh yeah, no, 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 we could totally do this. And then you throw it out. You just get rid of the code. So that's that's the idea. Usually that's like the technical debt thing. The, the awesome developers, in my opinion, are the ones that can do that and uh, join a team and be really awesome. Uh, and, you know, productivity as a group is so much higher than productivity as an individual. So uh, if once you work on a lot of projects, you get that. I was kidding about the 10x engineer thing. Uh, let's see, you didn't see the thread. Uh, I have 10 times less experience and am a 10x engineer. Yes, exactly, Ace Flames here. You didn't see the thread, but you saw some mentions of it, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yep, exactly. Yep. Uh, Mr. Shoji's uh, statement there is absolutely correct. When Whenever you do spike through something really fast, you look at the code later and you're like, ooh, geez, I'm not sure I'm going to let anybody see that code. That code wasn't good. Uh... Am I using uh, CQRS for this project? Um, not not explicitly. However, we are doing some things based on, uh, like, kind of. So we do have uh, sort of an event structure that we're, is kind of like... Um, like uh, CQRS based approach. We do we do use commands. Uh, they do get tossed into uh, essentially uh, like they're they're treated as events. Uh, we do have some other things that are more like that, where there's actually a queue of work that happens. So explicitly CQRS, no. By by the pattern, like by the exact pattern, no. We don't have that in our program. It doesn't really fit perfectly to what we're building. Uh, but some of the concepts do apply, and we are doing some similarities to it. Um, so, yep, absolutely some good stuff there. Uh, quite... <laughs> yes, good good job, Desert Griffin. Yep, just, just hide the code away. Just brush it under the rug. Okay, so uh, I alluded to uh, what we're going to be working on today. I know I mentioned it on Twitter, and I know I mentioned it in our Discord. So if you follow me on Twitter, or if you uh, are in our Discord, you probably heard me mention what we're planning on doing today. So... In our application, we have uh, a few things. Oh, you know what? While I'm talking about this, I'm going to go ahead and get the program running. So we built a series of commands into a chatbot. So this program is a chatbot. It runs in WPF using C Sharp. It is running .NET Core 3, which is what allows us to have .NET Core and WPF in the same thing. In doing that, what we're able to do is connect to the Twitch chat room and listen for commands sent in by the users in the chat. When we receive those, we send them over, uh, so we, we process them, figure out what the command was intended to do, and we send that information, uh, whatever the result is from that, into this game. This is Final Fantasy VII, and Essentially, what we've built for this is a bit of fun for Twitch streamers to let their chat uh, engage uh, in the actual game. Because, first off, it's fun to watch someone else play a game. If you haven't ever watched someone else play a video game, you really should try it sometimes. It can be a lot of fun. Uh, but, sometimes, you can add a little bit of extra fun by letting chat get involved. So, go ahead and try out some of these commands that you see over there. And uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, let's see. GitHub is usually respect repos. Uh, Mr. Soji, yeah. Um, yep. Uh, GitHub changed so you can now have private repos on GitHub. Uh, yeah, it was it was recent. Yep. Um. Yep. It was a it was a good change in my opinion. Uh, so feel free to do exclamation point menu and then either random or you can specify one color or four colors. Up to you and if you don't click it then I'm gonna go ahead and press buttons it'll make it happen no takers huh all right I will press the button so this is menu random so it will 
go ahead and just change the menu color and you can see every time I press this every time I put in one of these it will queue up the next color and it'll go from one transitioning to the next one each time so this is our menu color changing stuff so chat has full control it's not just me any of you can type in these commands and make these changes happen uh, in addition you can specify colors that you actually want to have happen so you you want to make it like this painful color I will change that really fast so you don't actually have to see it that long um, <laughs> But you can pick any color you want and just, you know, make the whole menu that color or you can send in four individual colors. So you could do red, blue, green, and orange. And it will just shift to red, blue, green, and orange. And it's really kind of cool. Uh, there's no Elvis color uh, equation child, but uh, there are a lot of oddly named colors. We're using the full set of HTML colors uh, so any any named color within that, as well as uh, hex codes. So if anyone wants to use hex codes, we have that as well. Uh, you just have to start them with a pound sign if you're going to use hex codes. Uh, and it either has to be named colors or hex codes. Uh, we don't currently allow you to intermix them. But this is the kind of cool stuff that we're building in here. So here's the deal. When a streamer sets this up and runs the program, they can actually decide a whole bunch of things in their settings. For example, they could make it so that menu color changing requires... Oh! <laughs> See, Equation Child, I don't know if you've noticed that timing. I clicked up the minimum bid to 10 and, and you immediately were required. Tr uh, try it again to something, Equation Child, and it should work again. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, like literally, like while I was clicking it, uh, that happened. So, there you go. So it's it's back. But yeah, that's the idea, is like, you can turn it on and suddenly it requires 10, uh, 10 gil in order to do the, uh, the menu uh, option. And so that is available to streamers. Now here's the trick. Uh, hey SNB, welcome. So, we have to do little transactions on some of these. Because, uh, oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Magoo, hang on, let me, let me help you out with the spelling on that one. I think it is like that. There we go. Got it. Got a got a that that one is is really hard to spell. <laughs> that that would be the color fuchsia, and it is painful enough that I'm gonna click that away. Uh, okay. So um, by the question, uh, I'll need to ask you about bl uh, the blending. Oh yeah. No, I can I can explain how that works. Oh, Equation Child, nicely done, nicely done. There's also an FF, you can do FF7, which is also a, color, a valid uh, hex number. Um, it wasn't worth spelling it right. <laughs> no, it really wasn't. Okay, so I'm going to show you all the other crazy feature that we built, and this one is uh, Rainbow. So when you do Rainbow, uh, I don't actually have to type anything right now, it's just going to keep on transitioning from color to color. So all of these various features, we want, so we want to enable gaming streamers to be able to both run this and give chat interaction, but we also want them to be able to, uh, in some way, monetize this. So that's the reason why we have the ability to say, no, to change the menu color it requires 10 bits. This also allows more popular streamers to enable a feature like this, because the problem is, without having some limitation on it, these colors would basically just be shifting non-stop and no one would ever be able to do it. Uh, so, <laughs> no, Equation Child, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't charge for the menu changing, certainly not while we're, we're uh, coding it, uh, but it is nice to have that check in there. So, what happened and how did it do that? So, let's go have a look at the code. Uh, this will just keep shifting in the background, which isn't a problem. Uh, <laughs> Uh, paramedic, uh, that would actually, that should work, uh, but the less than might not be valid. Um, hang on, did you get it in there? Oh, yeah, no, no, it's there, yeah, you got it. Uh, so you just, you just needed to get over a hundred, to, to get it there, paramedic. Y you have enough, actually. So, okay, so for name bidding... Uh, what you do is you you tell it an amount of gill from your your account that you want to apply to that. Uh, so subscribers to the channel can get a default amount. So SNB actually started with 150 gill, and so did Paramedic. 
So they actually have 150 free gil. Uh, Any time I start up the, the application, they just get that free. So it essentially means every stream, uh, the subscribers get that amount of free gil. So it's a very nice thing to encourage people to subscribe to Twitch channels as well. If, you, if you're going to watch a streamer do, you know, play Final Fantasy VII for, say, 10 episodes, that's 10 days where, hey, you get, you know, 150 gil. Why not? Sounds like fun. And um, so some of the things that we need to do. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, it, oh, is that just outside of the limit? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. We. Uh. Yeah. Uh. You're one one character too many. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Uh. Oh, uh, we could also do that. There you go. Uh, no, so the, the little heart character that Equation Child is suggesting, uh, it, it won't accept that because it does not have that character inside the game. This is not actually using uh, ASCII or Unicode or anything like that. Uh, those, those characters are actually like built into the game. It's No, it's not ASCII. It's not ASCII, it's not Unicode. I'm saying it's not a standard uh, measure. It is literally a custom one for Final Fantasy VII. It has its own custom mapping of of bytes to characters. It is quite absurd that they did their own. Uh, yep, so that's the cool thing. But again, old games, so they, they came up with, with a solution and, and they did what they needed because the full set of ASCII characters isn't what they needed. So they said, hey, we want only one byte. They needed some stuff out of ASCII, some stuff out of Unicode. And so they made their own set and did not meet a standard. So uh, it, it makes sense. So like, I'm, I'm not saying it was necessarily the best decision, but they, they made a choice and, and it worked. Okay, so we need to make sure that those transactions all happen. So let's take a look at that code and see how it works. Sorry, everyone's shutting down the program for a bit. Uh, yes, as, as exactly. As James mentions, they had to they had to save space. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, PlayStation had very little RAM and they were also having to fit it. Even though they were on optical media, they still wanted to conserve storage space. And yes, uh, the big thing is the is the amount of RAM on on the PlayStation. So while Final Fantasy VII is running on my computer, I am I'm actually like manipulating the memory and messing with it. There's so much extra memory on my computer that Final Fantasy VII takes up like nothing. But if you're running on an old PlayStation, you had to be really careful about every single bit that you used. So they took a bunch of steps for that. Let's take a look at the menu command since we're talking about it. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Where is it? Ah, here we go. Uh, so notice it takes in a dependency. So if we look at the constructor, um, we have a gill bank that it stores right there. So gill bank comes in. So inside every one of these commands right now, what we do is we take in this class that I called the gill bank. It keeps track of everyone's account balance so we know how much gill they have at any given point to spend on stuff. Um, James, uh, how does the how do the arrow functions work uh, like this? Um, I mean, as, uh, so uh, so like function XYZ, that would be uh, like, it sounds like you're describing the JavaScript version, but I can still explain this version. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. This really is just another bit of syntax. Uh, in For a case like this where you're just doing an expression bodied member, all that's really happening here is that when the C Sharp compiler comes along and sees one of these things, it converts this into the exact same code that it would if I had this written as uh, as an actual statement body like this. So expression bodied members, like they really don't get treated any differently. So um, it's really just different syntax for it. Uh, now, using one of those, uh, so if I were to use a lambda or a local function inside of my other function, that actually is slightly different. So those are actually treated a little bit differently. There's special things that have to happen, and that is uh, complicated enough that I, 
<laughs> I can explain it, like, I can explain it not as well as someone that, like, really, really knows it. I can explain it fairly well, but that is probably more complex than we want to dive into right now. Because uh, that would be quite the aside. So, let's talk about this gill bank. If we look at this code, I want you to take a look. So, what do we do? We say, first off, can override bit restrictions. So, we check to see, is this a moderator or, or like, the streamer? So the streamer, the moderator, things like that, we don't charge them bits. If they want to run their command, they don't have to use gills, gill for it. Uh, the moderator only gets that if the, if the streamer, the one running the program, has said, hey, allow the mods to override this one. So uh, moderators only get free bits on commands that we said, hey, the moderator gets free bits on this one. So this code exists in a bunch of places. So what I want to do is I want to get this check pulled out and then this code right here I want to get pulled out as well because here's what happens in any method in any one of these commands that we charge uh, gill in order to use we do this same set of steps where's the variance well the variance is what setting are we checking here the other variance is what is the cost? And then the last setting is what is our response message? But other than that, all of these is uh, all of these are the same thing. Is it Gil or Jill? Uh, I always said Gil, but if you said Jill, that's fine too. And uh, you can have the GIF or GIF battle as well if you like, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Say it however you like. I'm not worried about it. Kind of like how I'm not worried about uh, like what programming languages people choose. For example, do you know pick one that works well for you. If you like saying Gil or Jill, cool. Uh, and I apologize if that gets loud. Just yell at me and I'll fix it. Okay. So how can we fix this? There's a couple of ways. The first one, we could pull this code into the base command. If we pull this code into the base command, it will then be available in every command. Cool, that's absolutely an approach we could take. Uh, if we go that route, the constructors still all have the gill bank as a, as a parameter, so it still has to be in the parameter on here because it still is a dependency on all of them. So even though we're calling the base, we would just pass the gill bank down to the next uh, piece. Cool, totally fine. That works. Uh, the other way we can do this is we can extract out a uh, a class that has the concept of handling payments. So uh, maybe like a payment processor or something like that. Um, and instead of just the bank, which keeps track of the accounts, we have a processor that decides, uh, you know, how to how to process these and to make sure that all those checks happen. So it's an attempt to withdraw. Uh, it is. At handling this cost and things like that and you know works great um, what if you choose COBOL as your programming language um, you know in the right circumstance there are still people writing COBOL um, uh, but yes there, it's, it really depends on your circumstance because if, if you're working with an organization that's still running mainframe somewhere yeah you might be writing some stuff in COBOL uh, that that wouldn't be wouldn't be crazy um, Equation Child, you played FF11 and 14, and they said Gil also, if it's any case. Oh, yeah, no, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure almost everyone says Gil. Uh, but as long as someone, I mean, if someone says it another way, that's fine. Uh, oh, yeah, there, <laughs> yes, of course there are, Mr. So Sh Mr. Shoji. Uh, mega bucks to be earned with COBOL skills. Uh, yes, SNB is correct. Uh, if you are actually someone that works with some of those um, languages that are, uh, I'll say, um, in in modern day a little bit more obscure, but are still being used, there are companies that absolutely need people to maintain the software that's written in them and still build new things in that because the company doesn't really have... Um, yeah, Antiquate is not, not bad, but what I want to point out is it's not just that the language is, is old, it's that it's, um, it's one that, that still has use today, and that's the significant thing. And so uh, I know some people that use those, and it's really, really awesome... Uh, for, uh, you know, the, the teams that, uh, that that still use it. And yes, um, 
it really, I mean, it's going to vary based on where you are and everything like that and what the company is. But yeah, it's it's still absolutely needed. Plenty of companies still need them. Um, there were a, there's a lot of code written in it and it still has to get maintained. Okay, so let's extract this into a method. So step one. Let's pull this into a, into a method, take a look at the dependencies, because regardless of whether we compose this into an object or use inheritance to uh, pull it into the base class, this still needs to get extracted. So, uh, get value. Um, how about instead of get value, we say do something. That's a great name. Okay, so here's a couple of things that just happened. So take a look at what ReSharper did when it extracted this. It said, hey, you were doing a Boolean check to determine whether or not you should return. I need to do the same thing. So first off, it had the understanding that, hey, we need some kind of a Boolean returned. Rather than doing uh, a... So there were, there were two options here. It can either... Uh, yeah, I'm running the, uh, the the early access version of ReSharper uh, Equation Child, so it, uh, it's been throwing exceptions lately about stuff. So it can either return a, a value tuple here and uh, allow me to have both a Boolean and an integer result, or in this case, it did an output parameter for Gil. Either one of those works just fine. So whichever, whichever approach you like better, great. Uh, Welcome, Joe Mama. Uh, thank you for that follow, and uh, that's a that's a fun name. Okay, so returns false or returns true depending on whether or not we succeeded, uh, and we assign the gill value regardless. So we set it to zero initially. Yeah, uh, I I agree, Mr. Sho Shoji. They absolutely should have. Uh, Done a little bit more try catching on that. Okay, so a couple of things. We first off did need to pass in the user data because we're using user command text and channel. So we used three different things off of this. We absolutely need to pass that in. Uh, but those are also three values that will be on every command we receive. So that's good. Totally in here. This is the gill value that they spent. So let's say uh, gill spent instead of gill. No? Okay, we'll leave it as, as gill uh, and do gill spent. No. Okay, so gill spent. We're ignoring this value, which is funny. We have a nice discard there. So with withdrawing from the bank account, uh, we said that has a minimum cost cheer for gill. So we're saying this message parameter uh, needs to be just that, a parameter. So let's see if we can't make that a parameter, which will be, um, let's say, uh, fail, uh, fail response, fail message, fail message. Okay, so there's the fail message. Um, never agree with empty catch blocks. Oh, yeah, I think it was implied that there would be more than just nothing inside of your curly braces, but that's fine. Okay, so we've extracted this out. I'm not super keen on this being uh, an output parameter, so I might do this instead. Well, I don't know. Do we leave it as an output parameter? I guess people can ignore it if they want. Uh, Gil spent, yeah. Okay, we'll leave it as an output parameter. Alright, so what's next? Uh, this is the cost. So, we'll extract both instances of this, and we'll be... Um, Uh, yeah, amount. Uh, so we have that. Has to be there. The amount, send a message, return, and... Ooh, the can override bit restrictions. Um, let's inline that instead of... Instead of having this be a, uh... <laughs> hey, Wyvern! 
okay, so so SMB agrees he wants me to use a tuple, so I will use an, a tuple on that. Um, no exception, no problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it is a little bit weird, uh, SMB, I agree, because we're not, it's not really the purpose of it, it's just an extra result. Uh, so we should have... Uh, so I'll leave it as a tuple for now, but we might create a full type for this, uh, just because of the frequency that it's going to be used. Uh, I'm not sure yet, so we'll see. Um, this this might get a type though, so we'll do a boolean uh, and an int, and get rid of the gill spent parameter. int gill spent and it's going to be return true and gill spent and we'll plan on switching this because I'm pretty sure we're not leaving this one as a tuple because I think it's just spread around too much for that okay so gill spent and a tuple uh, I said we were going to inline this so let's take this value right here and we're going to say um, bool can override bit restriction um, uh, let's actually so instead of this because that was a that was a method name um, uh, acquires bits would be not this. So we'll we'll flip this. Hang on. We're going to need to reverse this logic. Okay, so requires bits is going to be um well, you know what? Resharper can do this for me. Why am I why am I thinking about it to make sure I flip it correctly? Uh, I'm just going to put that there. And then see if it can simplify. No? It won't simplify that? Okay. I thought it might. Alright, so what are we going to do? It requires bits if... Uh, if it's not the broadcaster. So we'll start here, because I think this makes the most sense. Not the broadcaster. And... It's not me and uh, in addition to that um, we either don't allow that or it's not a mod that's the logic right um, one of git transaction success, uh, git transaction failure. <laughs> Alright, we're, I don't think we're getting that complicated, but yeah. Alright, so, it requires bits if you're not the broadcaster and you're not me, and we either aren't allowing mod override or you're not a moderator. So, in any of those circumstances, you need to pay the bits. So, there we go. So what's specific about this? Uh, we need to... pull this value out. This is the check we need to make. So this is a parameter. Um, let's say uh, mod override setting. Maybe uh, can mods override. We'll just say that. So can mods override. So so if we require bits, we do that. So now this code that should be the same code, but generic now. Everything should be pulled out to here. We need to adjust this call because I did this without um, 
without tooling to help. So var, um, it was paid for, uh, paid amount equals that. If uh, if not paid for, then do that. This is paid amount. And what's the challenge here? What is this not like? Oh, uh, these got flipped, I think. Bit cost and allow mod override. Yeah, those got flipped somehow. I wonder how that flipped. Okay, so now we need a better name for do something. Uh, it would be so cool if that was just built in. Union types would probably top my C-sharp wish list right now. Oh, yeah. No, there, uh... Yes, uh, I agree with SNB. I have been waiting for record types in C-sharp since about, like, C-sharp 6. Uh, and by that I mean... Uh, there was a previous feature that solved the same re uh, requirement as uh, record types, and that was suggested in both uh, C Sharp 6 and 7, and record types were again were suggested for C Sharp 8, but we still haven't gotten them. So we'll see where that goes. Um, lots of stuff going on with the language. We'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, so do something needs a name. What's its name? Do something is now going to be called... Um, Process payment. There we go. Uh, so process a payment for that. Sorry. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. So we'll create this string every time, which that that cost is so negligible. I'm not worried about it. So that is an added thing that we've got based on this new structure um, that I'm willing to pay for. Main event, raise that. So um, that's assuming that they did the right thing. We'll do that. You know what? Before we bother with this, let's do the other check. I just realized we need to do it this way. Um, We're gonna do that. We're gonna say if if menu color is null, return. Uh, so if menu color is null, return, and then this one we're just gonna fire at the bottom if you got to it. So if you got down there, nothing else forced you to return, then fire that. There we go. Um, you accidentally tried to use the default interface the other day, but the project wasn't set up for C Sharp 8. <laughs> yes, I know exactly what you mean, SMB. Uh, I, I run into the same thing every once in a while, too. Uh, you forget which projects have C Sharp 8. Uh, now, I should specify for anyone that is wondering, um, the default implementations of an interface in C Sharp 8 are a useful feature in some cases where you have an existing interface. Uh, or if you've got a situation where uh, you're going to have a very tiny method that would otherwise cause you to need to both have an interface and an abstract class, and the default implementation of an interface will allow you to avoid that. Now, I should specify that the c -sharp team was very, very careful with the way that that is implemented, so um, you shouldn't run into too many problems unless you do crazy stuff with it, so don't try to use it as a way to get multiple inheritance. If you're usually composing objects instead of uh, getting code reuse out of inheritance, you should not run into a problem if you use that every once in a while. So it's a you use with caution, but very useful if you can uh, type of thing. Okay, so that looks good. Um, now here's the interesting part. If we are going to use this, well, first off, let me... Um, Ooh, I did that, didn't I? Oh, dang it. Why did I do that? <sighs> All right, hang on. Right before we started this, I ran a thing. So we're going to uncheck that. Nothing else changed, right? Let me just make sure. I did the basic code cleanup thing. Um, 
literally like while I was setting up the stream. So we're going to commit those as it's just the basic code cleanup that's just doing spacing and reordering of using statements. That's all that is. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to commit this change, and this is um, uh, refactoring the menu color command uh, payments. So we're going to commit that. We're not pushing this one yet. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just actually just going to run it real fast. Just make sure that we're not crazy and this works just fine. Uh, so uh, we need someone who is a subscriber to the stream or someone that wants to use bits, one or the other, it doesn't really matter, uh, and is also not a moderator. So uh, not SNB, for example. Uh, hopefully we've got someone in the stream. Uh, you'll get your, your extra bits back when we restart the program, so no loss there. So go ahead and use the menu command, someone, and uh, we'll find out what happens. So, although I guess I could adjust the settings, so... Um, huh. Weird. Well, now I want to see what happens. Menu colors. Wasn't null. Paid for. False. Alright, so we messed up something in there. Let's take a look at what it did. Uh, yeah, keep notifying me about that. That's fine. Gil spent zero. Uh, requires bits. False. Yeah, I don't require bits. Oh. Oh. Uh, that did not line up right. We needed this. We needed that. If you don't require bits, we return true with a zero spent. Um, otherwise... Uh, you have to withdraw and do that, and if you did not successfully do the correct amount, then you return false. Uh, Alright, we'll try that again. Uh, where are all the noobs to ban? Uh, Crimson Green, don't, don't ban everyone, even if they are noobs. Um, welcome to the stream. Alright, let's try this again. This time I'm going to watch it from, uh... <laughs> nice, Voight. Nice. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go there and we're just going to see what happens. So, it's paid for, so we should come down here and that should happen. Uh, Crimson, I use a Rode Podcaster mic. It works reasonably well for what I do here. I've had it for years. It is one of these things. It, it is this one right here. And uh, it does pretty well for what I need it to do. So there we go. Okay. Um, paramedic, if you're still there, try uh, running the command again uh, in one second. Yeah, hang on. Gotta change the setting. There we go. Cost. Okay, I need a uh, paramedic or someone else that's a subscriber, but not a uh, not a monitor. Ooh, yeah. See, it's not 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 running it. So, all right, try try it one more time. Uh, Renee, there are uh, there are dev chatter shirts. Um, so, they, they, they do exist. Uh, thank you, uh, Field of Greed and Paramedic both. Okay, so we come in here, Gil spent a zero, and should be required, uh, requires bits. 
Okay, so... Whose is this? Wait, this one's me. No, this one is... User... Crimson Green. Oh! Pfft. Thanks, Crimson. Alright, who's this one? Feel the Greed. Okay, feel the Greed. Do you require bits? Yes, you do. Okay, we come in here. Uh, feel the Greed. Gil spent 10. Gil spent is not less than the amount. Should come through. Oh, I have it backwards. That's the whole problem. Okay, we had it backwards the whole time. False. True. Totally derped that one. Uh, because, uh, that, yeah, because that was, that was dumb. Just because of the way that, uh, Resharper wrote, like, wrote that, I confused myself because it had true being the failure case and false being the success case, and, you know, my, uh, clearly not 10x, uh, engineer brain absolutely just flipped that. Alright, try it, try it again, should work this time. Hey, there we go, uh, but hang on. Because that's a that was a no payment required technically. Now now try it again and uh, hopefully uh, one of the subscribers that runs this uh, check your gill. So use the um, use the gill command like that and um, check your gill. So uh, but now now run the command uh, because you have 150 and it should lower to 140 if you run it again. Each of you. Yep. There we go. Okay. So it charged you both. Yep. That was perfect. Awesome. Thank you for checking that. Uh, very, very good. So, now that that is in the right spot, let's go ahead and commit this. Uh, oh, you want your money back? Feel the grade? Literally, if I restart, you get that money back. So, <laughs> you really have not lost it. Okay, so, uh, uh, let's undo that commit and commit that commit. There we go. So let's push that one. Okay, so we've extracted the logic. Now that the logic's extracted, let's put it somewhere. Because its current location is terrible. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, we, we need to put, put uh, Feel the Greed right into the unit test. We're going to just take you and, and just mash you until all you are left with is zeros and ones. And we'll leave you there. If I restart the program, you get your money back. Yes, that is that is what I said, SMB. Thank you. Ten, ten times the technical debt. Okay, so that's our code that processes the payment. Let's pull that somewhere else because this code is clearly reusable. And then that piece, we can... You know what? Let's, let's just write that somewhere else and uh, make test for it. Where is the gill bank, actually? It's in the models? Why did I put it in the models? That doesn't make any sense. Alright, step one, move the gill bank to the right place. Step two, fix the payment processor. Uh, so we'll make this... Uh, payments? That's true, Equation Child. If I skip all the tests of that, then I'm basically done. What was I thinking? So we'll move this into payments. Because I think that makes sense. Oh my god, this is going to change everything. Because everyone uses this. Because I haven't extracted it out yet. Oh god. <laughs> That's terrible. Whoops. Okay, close that one. Close this one. Close this one. You know what? I'm just gonna save, close all of them, and then I'm gonna do a quick uh, run cleanup code profile one. Because I think that'll fix all the namespaces. Okay, let's have a look. So this file clearly moved. That's all we did there. 
That should just be changing these. Yep, there we go. Yep, okay, so move Gill Bank to Payments Namespace. Okay, move that to the right place. Yep, thanks, Nylox. Yep, we got it. <laughs> Just need, a, just need to run either the uh, ReSharper or the Visual Studio cleanup of all of those. I started doing it and I was like, wait a minute. If I were doing one file, that'd be one thing. Uh, that'd be much faster. It's much faster just to use the keyboard shortcut for one file. More files, yeah, I better use the, uh, the actual part there. Okay, let's create a class called Payment Processor. So there's our Payment Processor. And this, in its constructor, needs Gilbank. I know it needs Gilbank. Uh, Gil Bank. Okay. You are going to create that. Step two. Let's go back to the menu color command. Uh, it's not menu color command? It's just the menu command. Derp. Okay. Process payment. Gank. There we go. Public bool int process data. Uh, ooh, that's a problem. Um, payment processor. Ooh, is this Twitch specific? That's a good question. Uh, Nylox, uh, any thoughts on Rider? Uh, so um, I have actually run Rider on the stream before. Uh, Rider is a perfectly uh, usable IDE. It's good. Uh, it's obviously built by the same people that do ReSharper and uh, like IntelliJ and everything like that. It's a company called JetBrains. They make a lot of really cool stuff. And uh, I do like Rider. I think it's, uh, it's, it's reasonable. Uh, I'm more comfortable in Visual Studio with ReSharper, which gets me a lot of the same stuff that Rider does. Uh, but again, you know, to each, each their own. Uh, I also usually run VS Code as well. Uh, so, yeah, they all work. Your .NET uh, slash React developer, and it handles TSX. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, Nylox, the, the part you're talking about, uh, when I'm in that kind of code, I'm usually in VS Code uh, instead of Visual Studio. So, yeah, running Rider or VS Code is definitely the choice, uh, If really, if you're doing a lot of front-end stuff. Because uh, Visual Studio amazingly still hasn't gotten in a great place with that. I think it's just the, the um, even though they release the release cadence on Visual Studio is uh, fast paced now, I think it just can't quite keep up. Okay, so I now get to decide whether or not I want to move the command data model. Into another place which I don't think I do I think I want to leave it where it is so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the payment processor and put it elsewhere <laughs> Nylox coming in with the uh, the follow and the twitch prime sub very nice uh, be sure to enjoy the uh, <laughs> all of the dev chatter emotes all over twitch because we got lots of good stuff like that one and of that other one. And uh, Flushy RL, welcome. Thanks for that follow. And if anyone else is in chat and has not hit that uh, follow button yet, be sure to do so. Uh, yeah, no, you've been here before. Your name's familiar, Nylox. Uh, so, well, gl glad, glad you hit the follow button this time. And uh, glad you've enjoyed the streams enough to make your way back here. I'm just going to move this to the Twitch project for now. Uh, I'm figuring payments are always going to be processing a Twitch payment anyway, so uh, I don't really have a problem with this coming in here. But yeah, that is the plan, so that's still going to be read. That I'm fine with. Payment processor. Let's fix this thing's namespace, because we just moved it over here. Yep. Move it to the Twitch namespace. Oh, it needs a Twitch client uh, in order to send a message. Takes in a Twitch client. Twitch client. Create a read-only Twitch client. Is it build now? Okay, there we go. All right. 
Before we connect this, I talked about the fact that we probably weren't going to keep this uh, tuple around too much longer. So uh, let's go ahead and get rid of it now, and we're going to replace it with a with an actual value. So one of the advantages to a tuple in C sharp is right now construction and deconstruction of an object in in this format that a tuple uses. So this is the construction of an object. And uh, it's red right now because the code, I, I moved it without like using a move command. This is deconstruction. So essentially, this is taking the, the result of this, which is a tuple, and it is taking that and instead inserting it into, you know, basically deconstructing that into its parts. So the tuple had both a Boolean value and an integer, and it separated those out. If we ever get the power to do this sort of deconstruction with regular C-sharp objects, that would be really freaking cool. But it is so complicated to figure out what the ordering would be that I'm not sure I actually want it. Because <laughs> I'd be afraid of what the implementation would be. Because uh, keep in mind that, that this code, order matters on those. So. Uh, tuples, they're they're cool but sort of dangerous. Hey, average guy, welcome. Um, all right, so let's get rid of this. Uh, I want to have some kind of a result object, and I now uh, get to just make this, which we're gonna do public class. Uh, what is this gonna be? Um, payment result. Um, we'll make a boolean value, um, we'll say paid, and it's going to be get only property paid, and then we're going to have a, an int amount paid, uh, there are no, fr there are no cents in this, no fractions of, uh, of gil, um, and we might add something else if we if we decide later on that we want to have a record that it was not paid for, if something needs to know that it wasn't actually paid for. What? There we go. <laughs> I was like, why didn't that why didn't that work? Uh, ooh, it's uh yeah, it's a record of the transaction. Um, so I I agree, SNB. I want to avoid the word transaction though because that has extra meaning in programming that I don't want someone to get confused by. It's one of the challenges like, welcome to the world of programming where even when we work for good names, we still run into problems. Uh, let me tell you about um, a company that I worked with that needed to make services for funeral services. And you were like, service, wait, funeral service or like, service like programming concept service which which service is it and uh then the same thing i've worked with um religious organizations that put things out and it's like what are they well we're scheduling services wait you're scheduling ser service oh 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 like a like a church service okay yeah sorry programmer brain there for a moment <laughs> These, these challenges we run into. Uh, and then even with it, it's like, yes, this is a financial transaction that has happened. Um, uh, but I don't want anyone to think of like, you know, hey, we're running this in a transaction. So I'm just gonna go go with that. Uh, get, yeah, guilt transaction could work. Uh, sure, we'll go with that. Because it's specified enough. Guilt transaction, that'll work. That'll work. Uh, all right, so a gill transaction. Turn new gill transaction. Uh, false, they didn't pay. Uh, and gill spent should be zero at that point. Change the type of payment process to that. Yeah, we're gonna do that in a second. Return new gill uh, gil transaction and true paid and gill spent is the amount. Okay, now we're gonna tell it to change the type of this method. So there we go. So this now returns back a gill transaction 
let's see. This Sunday, our ceremony will be 10 seconds long. We're refactoring to microservices. <laughs> very, very good. Uh... <laughs> All right, here we go. So let's jump back to the menu command where this is gonna be the first place that we use this. So I want you all to see something. Notice, right in here, payment processor takes in two dependencies. Really important. Takes in two dependencies, the Gill Bank and the Twitch client. Let's take a look at the menu command. It no longer uses its Twitch client or its Gill Bank. So we can chop both of those dependencies from there because we essentially tied in all of that work into this one dependency that is the one that's going to handle that. And we're going to be able to set other commands to do the same thing. Now remember that I pointed out, if we did an inheritance-based approach, we would still have to pass those two dependencies, the Twitch client and the Gill Bank, because we would have to give them to the base class when we call the base constructor. So we're able to sort of like tie them in and be like, no, we sort of made a hierarchy. We're like, no, let's hide those two in this other dependency. Because to be honest, our code doesn't really care how, how we sent back the response message or how we check the account money. It just says, hey, I need to process a payment to make sure this person's allowed to do this. So here you go process the payment. I don't care how you do it. And and if you succeed, then if, if you, you know, if it doesn't work, then that's fine. Okay, so let's chop that and chop that. We no longer need the Twitch client there, uh, which actually, let me do this, uh, because if I remove it, remove parameter and update usages, it will go and, and get it in the other places where it's used. Okay, remove the gill bank from here as well. Because it's going to update uh, the, the test class there. Now, the test is going to run into a problem because I'm now going to request a payment processor. <laughs> so, we need a pallet collection. We need a payment processor. So, we're going to introduce this read-only field, the payment processor. And we're now going to say payment processor dot process payment. And the result we get back is a gill transaction. Uh, so, if it was not paid, return. So, gill transaction dot amount paid. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, glad, glad you liked it, uh, SNB. I thought it would be a good way of showing uh, the, the two different approaches, because I, I think people kind of get how the other one would work. Uh, yes, we do need to deposit that into there. Um, the payment processor takes in a gill bank, takes in a Twitch client. Uh, oh, whoops. Twitch client dot object derp. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh... Oh, yes. No, uh, that is that is absolutely true. Um, I, I would not say that object-oriented programming uh, I would not say that it is a failure of that promise. I think that's like harsh language that's that's designed to, you know, like uh, grab attention and, and be provocative, right? That's clearly a provocative title uh, is, is really what they're going for there. Uh, but I, they're not wholly wrong. Um, the, the idea is that 
just using object-oriented programming or just using functional programming or anything like that does not solve the problem of writing good code. You still need to use them in an effective way. So you have to understand how object-oriented programming works, what the pitfalls are and things like that, so you can use it in good ways. So there's a lot of value in inheritance uh, for the right types of structures. In some cases, if you were to, you know, use composition, um, you can really end up with some bad uh, solutions as well. That's why we say favor composition over inheritance, not always composition, never inheritance. So that's one of those big important uh, like fine lines that you need to walk there is, yeah, we want to make sure we're using more competition, uh, composition than we are inheritance, but that doesn't mean that inheritance is bad, and that doesn't mean that all composition is good. So, and yes, SNB is correct. Um, inheritance is just one aspect of object-oriented programming, uh, but that's part of the reason, like, uh, for example, that's part of the reason why the solid principles of object-oriented programming exist, is that is a, you know, defining of, of all the different ways that we are to use object-oriented programming, you know, we've found these to be beneficial. Okay. Let's go do this same thing in the next place. do 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 Got one more thing I gotta do with this. Gilbank payment processor import. Let's run it real fast. Miha, yeah, yeah, you like the title of this stream? I thought it was funny too. Uh the only thing that's that's concerning is when someone comes in and they want to make sure that, uh, and yes, I am calling you out right now, uh, they want to make sure that I was kidding when I said 10x uh, engineer in the title of this video. Uh, video? Stream? Whatever this is. I know what this thing is. Uh, okay. So, someone uh, that this would cost money for uh, m money uh, so I need a subscriber in the stream that is not a moderator to use the menu command uh, real fast we got someone around right now that can uh, that can try that for me just do like menu random like this uh, greetings and welcome lat uh, Smart ASCII, you're how how is Smart ASCII not subscribed to my stream? What is this? First off, uh, thank you, Smart ASCII, for confirming that uh, that that code works correctly. Uh, Smart ASCII, I was kidding. I think your subscription probably ran up like three months ago or something like that. I don't know. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm I'm gonna go with lat. Uh, until I know how the J is pronounced in that in that name. Uh, welcome, thank you for that follow, much appreciated. Hopefully you're enjoying the stream. Uh, ah, do we not have a sub sitting around right now? No, no sub sitting around. Uh, thank you, Dave. Much appreciated. Uh, Dave, check your gill. Uh, just to confirm, and uh, that, then we'll be good. But thank you, Dave. Much appreciated. Thanks for helping out. Hey, hey perfect. Uh, the, okay. Um, cool. I will go with Lat then because it's easier. And uh, anyone I can nickname, I usually like to nickname. Kind of like how I went with Dave. Um, and I usually just say Miha. <laughs> So, works pretty well. Uh, yep, nicknames, they're easy, especially when you're on a live stream, because you got to mention a lot of people's names, so it's just easier if you can just shout one thing. One, one syllables are the best. Okay, closing that. Awesome, Gl glad to hear it. Yep, any, any nicknames that people are good with, I always appreciate. <laughs> I will have to say them a lot. Okay, so we have our payment processor. Let's go find another command. Do, 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 do. Where's our next command? What costs money? Uh, name bids. Name bids are different. Maybe I should save these till later. 
Name bids are different. We're not going to do that one yet. Um, you know what? We were building... Uh, we were building two commands. I thought I committed. Did I not commit? Oh, I didn't commit it. You're right. I didn't commit it. Uh... I went to commit it, and then I was like, oh, I have one last step before we commit. Uh, thank you for preventing me from derping that. Uh, much appreciated. Okay, so, uh, and, uh, Doomra, thank you very much for that follow. Much appreciated. Uh, good stuff. You're all awesome. Payment processor. Payment processor. There we go. So we're going to pull in this code again. Let's try and make it work. Payment processor, process payment, command data. Oh, what's the fail message? Um, this is uh, that it failed to process the payment. Um, so we'll need to look up the cost for this. So for now, we're going to leave that as, an em as just an empty string. The cost, we didn't make it yet. So I'm just going to put in a hundred and we'll extract that into a settings variable. And then can mods override is going to be true for now. Again, we need to extract it into a variable. So both of those need to get extracted into a setting for this thing. So menu settings, menu settings, it's right here. So we have enable the rainbow command. In addition to enabling rainbow, we need um, you know what? Does it need its own, or do we allow a mod override on any of these? Uh, I guess if you allow the moderator to override any color setting, you should you'd be allowed. Like we'll just say you could allow them to override any of them. So we'll make it so that we don't need a special mod override for that. So we'll say, um, settings, um, menu settings, allow mod override. There we go. Uh, go deeper, one letter nicknames, whatever, S. Uh. Oh. <laughs> I just, I just noticed Miha's, uh, response there. Uh, you know, I could try the last name. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, not totally against it. Uh, it, it, it could be Zapan or Zapan. I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, it's tough. The the real challenge that I don't think people realize is uh, when whenever you're guessing names, you don't even know what culture they're from. So you're like, you see, you, like you you see a letter and you're like, okay, if that's Germanic, it's this. If not, I'm not sure. Like that could go one of like five ways and. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. So, and and the worst part is, even when you're like, that's the exact spelling of a name in my country, you're not always even sure because it's like, well, actually, if that's if that's from another country, they could have the same name and pronounce it completely differently. So, we do our best. If we mess it up, just let us know. We'll we'll say it better next time. That's, that's how it works. Um, let's make rainbow mode by default cost that. Um, rainbow mode cost. And it will change from a bool to an int. <laughs> Thanks, Miha TV. Miha TV, coming in with, uh, fun, fun comments, we'll say. Ah, dunk, dunk, dunk. Rainbow. Did I? Yep, I missed one thing when I was copying. 
Uh, <laughs> do try to keep the uh, conversation mostly in English, though, uh, just because uh, we, we do want our moderators to be able to uh, actually moderate the, the chat, which they can really only do uh, if our moderators can definitely understand the language being spoken. So, and as this is a stream where I host it in English, uh, we assume everyone at least speaks a little bit of English. No. <laughs> well, well played, SNV, well played. Uh, and I don't remember what that, uh, is it? man, I have not seen that movie in, like, forever. Um... Yeah, I'm not going to uh, await task. I'm not going to make a Google Translate bot. That's That's been done, and also I think it would mess up a lot. And then you'd also have to handle uh, making sure that it... Um, uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm aware of what it's from, uh, S&B. Uh, but I've not... I've not uh, that, that is... That's been a while. Okay, so... What did we say for the last one, roughly speaking? In the menu command, what did we say? I almost want to find out if... I almost want to just... Um, change this so that, like... Sorry, and then command text. Like, make that message actually just be in there. Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, Maelstrom, welcome. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that follow. Much appreciated. If anyone else is in the chat and enjoying the stream, uh, do hit that follow button, as it is the best way to get notified when we go live. Okay, so that should trigger a payment requiring a hundred gil. Uh, oh, a thousand uh, to start up rainbow mode. Um, Uh, ooh, do we shove that into the payment processor, though? I'm almost thinking we do. Because we passed in the cost already. We just then need to pass in the command text? Yeah, I think, uh, which is on the command data. You know? We're gonna do that. We already had these values. We didn't need that. payment um it doesn't need that message it can already just do it so this is just amount command text has a minimum of amount cheer for gil uh yeah okay well, that makes that even easier. This doesn't need this anymore. Well, seems we got even more code reuse out of that. That's really nice. Engage rainbow mode. Uh, Flushy, uh, absolutely. In fact, I will show you what we're working on. Uh, I will. I will do you one better. So this should now run, uh, and yes, SNB uh, ha has it covered in uh, the the explanation. So we are making this little WPF app, uh, WPF.NET Core three little application here, connects into chat, says that nice message when it gets in there, and then if we run uh, Final Fantasy seven right here, we can do things like click the random color button, and boom. Uh, we have new colors in the game, or maybe you like these colors. That's nice. You can pick whatever one you want. Uh, you can also go with some named color palettes like this one, or maybe you're a big fan of the default colors and you can put it back to that. Uh, the code that we're working on right now is what processes the payments. So for a streamer that wants to use this and wants to be able to monetize it so that uh, they can, you know, actually either 
not have it constantly changing on them. So if it's a really popular streamer, they might enable, um, you know, gill costs of these commands, uh, and that would, you know, make it so it's not just constantly flipping. Uh, or, you know, you can use it as just a way of, of monetizing things for streamers that want to be able to, you know, there are full-time streamers that, you know, this is the only way that they get any money. And so uh, they need to have ways of, like, chat being able to throw in bits in order to both participate and have a little bit of fun. So it lets the community support their streamers and uh, the streamers actually, you know, be supported. Uh, other features that exist are things like this one. So we were just adding in a payment to rainbow mode and this is rainbow mode. <laughs> rainbow mode is probably my favorite one right now uh, and that is this where it's just an ever-changing uh, sequence of colors. Doesn't go on forever, but uh, it goes on for like a minute or two or something like that of like just shifting colors around. Yeah, sort of uh, a wait task. It sort of is like a rave mode almost. There's no difference between rainbow mode and someone just changing the menu color uh, with menu random like a hundred times. It is the exact same effect. So if you were to just, you know, type in menu random a hundred times, this is what you'd get because uh, what we actually do when you send in these commands is we actually create an event from that and uh, we, we create a workload object, we put that into a queue and uh, then these just get processed. So. Uh, if too many people send in menu changes, we just queue them up, and they just run in order, changing from one person's color to the next. So, that's all we do. Which would allow us to do some nice features in the future along the lines of, uh, say, making sure that anyone that changes the menu color at least gets to keep it for 30 seconds or something like that. So, if you want to change the menu color, uh, you at least paid for 30 seconds of the menu color if someone came along to change it afterwards. Um, if we did that, though, I'd need some kind of exception, because there are some offensive colors, like Lime is really, really bright. And uh, if you were actually playing the game, a Lime would not be a fun color to have just thrust upon you for 30 seconds. <laughs> You'd want it changed. All right, and I'm going to toss a default in on the end, so uh, when it finishes rainbowing, it will go back to default now, because I've queued that up, so it's at the end of the queue. So when we see it go to the default color scheme, that means that it was done. Um, and then the nice thing is that I can just queue up another menu default after paramedics menu lime. Um, uh, Showbobs, uh, welcome. Thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that follow. And headshot. Yes, we'll go with ugly color. <laughs> Paramedic, we'll see lime for a second. Uh, we'll see lime. <laughs> you'll you'll get it displayed for a second. So yeah, this is the program. It actually does way more stuff than just the menu colors. It's just the menu colors is the one that looks really cool. You'll notice that like Tifa's name is My Girl Less Than Three. That was actually named by someone in chat who uh, you know typed in the command to uh, suggest that rename. So same thing goes with like the Cloud and Barrett. Uh, you can rename them as well. You can actually rename party members that are not even, like, that have not joined the party yet uh, in Final Fantasy VII. So there are characters that as you play along, you, your characters meet and uh, eventually join your team. Those characters can already get renamed if you want. So there is there is no limits on that. Um, the one, there there are, I will say that the backend code for how we handle that changes. Oh, there we go. There's default. There's Lime. And then back to default. Uh, Mr. So Shoji, that's how long Rainbow lasts. <laughs> it just ended. So hence why I set the, the default value uh, for triggering Rainbow mode pretty high. Uh, so I think I put in, yeah, I put in the default as a thousand bits. So for a thousand bits, you can, you know, you toss a streamer ten bucks and you can have like a couple of minutes of, uh, of that. Uh, we're going to extract that so it's a setting based on the uh, streamer's choice. Uh, yeah, right after you asked, Mr. Shoji, that's when it ended. 
So we'll be adding a setting that controls how long that lasts. So a streamer could decide, hey, I want it to run for only 30 seconds or a minute or something like that, and then adjust the costs accordingly. Uh, and, you know, that way it fits their stream and just the way they want to do it. So um, someone might not like how long I have Rainbow uh, set to go. But again, make it configurable, and it's just nicer that way. All right, so that seemed to work. Let's go ahead and get that committed as well. And then I want to see if I can get some tests just on the payment processor and not on the other pieces. Because I think testing the payment processor is actually going to make more sense and be a little bit better than our previous testing of the commands uh, that was getting the payments because that used to get tested in there. Now, because of the fact that we were testing the command, our, our unit tests have now sort of become closer to an integration test because we extracted that out. So it is sort of like not a not like a full integration test, but it is a little bit because we're testing the integration between the command and the payment processor now. So that's still an integration. So, okay, so this is um, adding payment processing and settings to the rainbow command. And then that's really just extracting that into there. Um, adding payment processing and settings to rainbow mode. There we go. So that is in there. And uh, welcome, uh, Sobaka, I'm guessing. Uh, hopefully I didn't butcher that too much. If I did, I apologize. Tell me how to say it better and I will, uh, or at least I'll attempt to. And uh, thank you for that follow. Hopefully you're enjoying the stream. And anyone else that's in here and has not clicked follow yet, be sure to do so. Best way to get notified when we go live. Uh, that's how you don't miss our streams. Uh, on this channel, we try to stream about four times a week. Uh, on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Doesn't always happen. Uh, we are 200-some episodes in. What number is this? And, uh, I would have to look even know. We're on episode 208, apparently? Wow, 208 episodes. That is really crazy. Uh, we have been, you know, cra crazy awesome stuff. So I really want to thank all of you for, for, you know, being here for all of our streams and everything. Uh, it just tells us your throw. Um, yeah, no, headshot. Uh, oh, uh, hang on. I think that's the command. There you go, headshot. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and try it. <laughs> You've learned some things, even though you weren't around for all 200. Glad to hear it, Desert Griffin. If there were actually anyone other than me that had been here for all 208 episodes, I would be really, really impressed. Uh, but realistically, I am the only person that has been here for all 208 episodes. I am fairly certain that even Crimson Green has not made 200 episodes. Uh, or SNB for that matter. I, I doubt either of them have, have made 200 episodes, but they are some of the most consistent people that are at least here in a lurk, if not uh, here for, you know, chatting and interacting. <coughs> Yeah, so um, uh, the way that the Rock, Paper, Scissors game works that people are playing over, that's actually running to another one of our bots. Um, all it does is uh, you you essentially join the game of Rock, Paper, Scissors with whatever you want, and it's kind of like a, almost like a casino game style thing, so you're playing against the bot. The bot's going to pick uh, one thing at the end, and uh, then it will pay out who... Yeah, so there you go. It chose paper, so only people that chose scissors win. And was there only one person that chose scissors? Oh. <laughs> nice. Only one, like all those people playing and only one of them chose scissors. Well done, bot. Uh, speaking of which, um, I can tell you roughly speaking how old that uh, that bot is. Yeah, so so we wrote that rock, paper, scissors game probably in, in March of 2018 would be my guess. Based on the I swear it's not rigged. After I said I swear it's not rigged, uh, like I was like, you guys all saw me write this. Everyone was here. <laughs> the code's not rigged, but everybody thought it was rigged because, because like, <laughs> we humans see patterns and things. We're like, so and so won three times in a row. Yeah, it's random. <laughs> like, I can flip a coin and get heads four times in a row. That's not crazy. 
Can I buy a skin for my rock? Oh, average guy, yeah. Now, if, if we go back and work on the bot again, which I do want to do sometime soon, we'll, we'll add some nice stuff to it. Okay, so payment processor process payment for the rainbow command. Let's add it to the Mako command as well. Did I say Mako command? The Michael Jolly coming in with a seven month resub. That is awesome. Uh, and uh, welcome. Uh, glad you're here in the stream. Uh, I, I will say we've been running with the same set. So for anyone that is uh, actually uh, subscribed, we have um, obviously a whole bunch of fun emotes that I think people probably like that are uh, our subscribers. I'm going to be rotating our, our emotes around because we have like nine emotes or something like that. Uh, nine, 11, 11, 11 emotes? Crap, do we have 11 emotes? We might have 11 emotes. We have a whole bunch of emotes for the stream, and I'm going to be rotating them around because we've been running with this set for a while, so I want to give people the chance to use other ones. So if you are one of our subscribers, uh, prepare because we're probably going to have our emotes disappear for like a couple of days while they approve the new ones. Uh, and we'll be shifting up some of the ones that you've seen before. Uh, I will probably be making shock available to everyone and the uh, love emote. So those... Uh, we might drop our, our sword fighting, so it will be less fun in the raids that we do. Because uh, I think we'll drop the left and the right sword fighting, but uh, we'll probably keep derp, uh, think, and we'll bring in love and shock. So those, those ought to be good, and uh, should be nice and fun. Okay, so right here, uh, we said, The Mako command, add a cost and allow others access. Sounds good. As long as there's a cost, we can let other people do it. Because we also said we added a setting for whether or not it's even turned on. Now we need to add this. Uh, so uh, the Michael Jolly, uh, don't don't you agree? Isn't this absolutely a 10x engineer uh, stream here? Totally 10 10x engineer. Yeah, uh, like <laughs> the. Uh, developer community has been all on about the 10x engineer thing uh it's really kind of funny i was waiting for the 10x per <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah i'm i'm a 10x developer uh you know uh because um i i write 10 times as much code on stream that's what the 10x stands for <laughs> you you're you're like a half a, you feel like a half an x Dude, we all feel like a half an X sometimes. That is absolutely a thing. Okay, so we don't want rainbow mode cost. We want Mako mode cost. And allow mod override on menu settings is the one we're going to use. Uh, so, yeah. Ooh, that code reuse is so nice. So nice. Uh, okay, so I guess since we put it in here, we'll allow anyone to trigger these now. So first off, let me commit that change to rainbow mode, uh, to the rainbow command. So we'll do this one first. Uh, allow anyone to start, uh, to trigger rainbow, uh, mode. So anyone can trigger it as long as they pay for it now, and it's turned on. Uh, and then this one. So rainbow mode cost allow, uh, allow mod override, uh, whoops, Mako mode cost. Mako mode cost right there. So we'll jump here. So we're gonna duplicate this. We're gonna change its name to Mako mode cost. We're going to drag it down here to be just after enable Mako mode, so the ordering's right. We're going to change the value it depends on to be uh, Mako mode cost. Then we're going to jump to where we enabled that. Dupli uh, actually, let's duplicate this line. Duplicate that line. Drag it down here. Change his name. Mako mode uh, will set that's cost, that cost to 500 gil by default. And that now should work. Uh, that should enable Mako mode and Rainbow mode for everyone. Um, 10x Rockstar. Yeah, I am. I'm a 10x Rockstar dev. 10x Rockstar. 
thought 10x meant you write 10 times more code than you need. Uh, the, the funny part, Michael Jolly, is I think that actually might be the case. Or in some time, in, in some cases, you you write uh, 10 times too few letters in your variable name. So you did one letter instead of 10. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and give this a try. Uh, so there should now be a payment required for running rainbow mode. Uh, so Michael, uh, why don't you go ahead and try activating uh, Mako mode or rainbow mode, either one. So just do exclamation point Mako or exclamation point rainbow. Uh, Janisku, hey, thanks. That that did it. And uh, so Janisku can't. Uh, and then, yep, see? So they, they chime in. It says Mako has a minimum cost of 500. Rainbow has a minimum cost of 1,000. Yeah, see? So that's that's perfect. So that's the code reuse that we did today. Uh, we implemented a payment processor that uh, when you attempt to make payments uh, and you don't have the, the right amounts, it responds with that. Uh, so, for example, um, uh, hang on. Paramatic uh, Excel. Uh, there you go, uh, paramedic. Uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and try running Mako mode. You now have act. You now have enough guild to trigger Mako mode. Oh, actually, are we in Mako mode? Who triggered it? Did someone actually have enough for it? Did we? Did we run it? Oh my God, we ran it because I'm an idiot, didn't we? Didn't we? We ran it because I'm an idiot. Yep, totally did. Totally did. Totally did. I derped that something good. Uh, we'll, we'll end that. Uh, derp. Derp and derp. Derpy derp and derp. Derp, derp, derp. Gill. Uh, gill transaction. I derped that. Uh, if. Turn. Derpy derp derp herp and derp herp a derp herp a derp a derp herp a derp a derp 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 uh yeah uh paramedic all the money disappeared anyway so it doesn't matter uh the Michael Jolly actually that won't matter uh because we actually already are handling that uh that exact thing uh, so here's here's the way that it works, because I will explain. So first off, let me menu default us. Watch. So I triggered those menus running, but notice how it completes every transition before it goes to the next one. So if you trigger rainbow mode, but rainbow mode is still active, you actually just trigger a second rainbow mode that starts after the first. So... Uh, it, it actually is perfectly fine to uh, to trigger one that someone else already has. So it will deduct the, the amount of gill, and you've just triggered a second one. So, yep, blue, red, white, and red. There you go. Lots and lots of cool stuff that you can do with that. So you can also do some really nice uh, sets of colors. So you could do, like, green, forest green, um... Uh, dark green and black. So you can do like this, which makes this really nice. So you can do these. You can do some pretty nice colors. So I think that actually looks decent because it sort of just blends uh, its way down, but it's not even. Even it is not. It's not evenly balanced even among the corners. It kind of it kind of tugs a little bit down. So it gets a little bit darker as it gets lower, and a little bit darker as it gets to the right. So it's a. Uh, it's a nice little, uh, nice little blend there. I think it looks good. So, uh, yeah, if we trigger rainbow mode or mako mode, it will actually just run those after the previous. Oh, hang on. What did, uh, yeah, see? So that's actually a pretty nice blend, too. That's like a, you know, almost like a sky, you know, like, kind of thing. Some nice colors. It's got the nice light blue, but little bits of red. It's good stuff. Okay. Uh, let's do this first off rainbow command uh, so that needs to happen first um, 
actually require the payment for Rainbow Command. Derp. Uh, and then on this one, it is we are adding a payment to the Mako command. Uh, add payments to the Mako uh, mode. Yeah. Okay. Other thing that I need to change regarding this, we did not add settings to the settings screen. So I want to make myself a to-do note. Uh, now I I often get feedback from people. They're like. Well, if you need to-dos, shouldn't you be making a card for that? And I said, then I go, well, hang on. Before I merge in this branch, I want to get my to-dos cleaned up. So they're the, the reminder of, hey, you added a thing. Make sure you get that before you commit this. Because you can search your pull request for the to-do comments. And if you see them there, then you can be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> need to fix this first. Uh, okay, so uh, rainbow mode cost to-do. Uh, add to settings screen. And same thing on the Mako mode cost. So those two need to appear on there now. Uh, because we added them. Cool. Um, to do comment reminders. Commit. Push. Okay. Um, that ought to work well. Uh, what else do we need to knock out on here? Um, so I need to change the way that we do that XAML on the uh, settings page. I don't know if we do that today. Let's keep pulling out more of these payment process transactions. Let's do some of that. So we did Mako mode. Um, we did rainbow mode. Uh, you have to leave now. You spend your remaining gill on some beer. Oh, have fun, paramedic. Uh, and uh, if, if you're, yeah, I, I don't know where everyone's based, but uh, either way, have, have a nice afternoon, evening, uh, morning, wherever you are. Enjoy the rest of your day. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's see, what is next? So we did that one, we did that one. You know what? Let's mess with the pauper command. This is, this is our most evil command by far like really really evil we have nothing anywhere near this evil payment processor payment processor And yes, it has a lot of dependencies because this one does a lot of stuff. Um, I thought about extracting this out so that calling this command actually just triggers, an, you know, essentially an internal message in our system uh, to run elsewhere, uh, so that this could simplify a little bit. Uh, but haven't done it yet. Okay, so for now we have it restricted to only the only the bot itself or the broadcaster can run this. Um, Actually, do I still have... Ooh, I good. I did still have it on there. Um, if gill transaction paid has not been paid, return. So if they didn't pay yet, just return. We don't run this command. Um, gill transaction payment process uh, it's not Mako mode. It is Equipment settings. So it's not a naval popper command. It is a popper command cost. That's what we want. Um, and then equipment settings allow mod override. Okay. Um, So let's go to where this one is, and we're going to add this cost. This is going to be an int cost, and underscore p, underscore p, is 
So now these need to exist around where this was declared. Underscore P. It is an int. And its cost is... Oh man, I don't even know how expensive to make this. So, okay. So I will give a quick explanation because I didn't yet. So, uh, oh geez, these colors. Um, hang on. Uh, they're really bright. Okay. So Final Fantasy VII is a uh, is a role playing game. It's a JRPG. Uh, in these kinds of games, it is common for your characters to level up, find items, find equipment, uh, to be able to you know complete the quests that they go on. Um, yeah, here. We'll make it 20,000 for now. So for a small streamer, that's a reasonable start. For a big streamer, uh, that is not a reasonable start. Uh, a big streamer is probably going to want to set that at like $100 or something ridiculous like that. Um, okay. So now it's in there. Now you can use the menu command uh, to change things if you want. Okay. So in a game like this, you end up with characters that have various weapons and items and equipment, things like that. Uh, in addition to the defaults that we have here, there are other ones that are also available to me because I found them while playing the game. Uh, I also have a whole bunch of items. Uh, I have uh, materia, which are like the magic uh, abilities. So we've got these as well. So there's a bunch of stuff that my characters have collected that is what makes them powerful. Well, it just so happens that the pauper command makes you poor. Is it turned on? So I want you all to notice my gill total here. My gill total is now two. That's right, I left you with two bits. If I look at my items, you'll notice I no longer have any items. If we look at the character's equipment, he no longer has the mithril bangle that he had on before. He now has a bronze bangle. And I'm clicking the key here. There are no additional armlets to choose from. No additional weapons. In fact, everyone has been set back to their default values. If I check the materia in those weapons, it's not there anymore. I no longer have it. It's all gone. So, yeah. About that. Wasn't that fun? Who wanted to have any uh, actual resources anymore anyway? Yeah, so <laughs> that's the pauper command. Uh, it is intentionally expensive. It is super evil. If someone's if someone's playing the game and you hit them with the pauper command, they basically are just reset back down to a base character with no money, no items, nothing. So it is really, really painful. Um, but hey, uh, at least you know. If, if except for that, it was me doing it. But at least if you ran that. You uh, you did you were supposed to send the streamer like twenty bucks or something like that, so you feel less bad about it. Um, so there's that. Okay. So if you look at the popper command, yep, I used the popper command cast cost, used the equipment override value, and passed in that. Looks good. Um, okay. Oh, and uh, before I forget, on the equipment settings, I need to add in on this to do add to settings screen. Add that comment. Uh, just remind me that that needs to go on the settings screen. We created the settings, so it actually is in there. So uh, essentially, what that means is if you save the settings and edit the file and everything like that. So we made these file-based settings uh, so that. You know, you could make a default or you could have your settings, you could send them to someone else. So if one streamer says, hey, I love the settings that you've got and which things you've got enabled and the cost and everything, send that to me. And they just can and you can just, just exchange settings uh, pretty nicely that way. So obviously, if we did that in some kind of a database, you'd have to like send that like it just wouldn't work as nicely. So we did file based stuff just so that uh, the community can sort of work together with that, that stuff. Uh, so add a cost and allow hopper command. There we go. It's in. Alrighty. Uh, next up. What other evil commands can we add this to? 
Uh, we could do the weapon command and the, uh, yeah, let's, let's check out the weapon command. Oh, yeah, the weapon command, that is funny. The weapon command is just a named equipment command. I forgot about that. Because uh, <laughs> we were like, wait, these three are identical except for the equipment type. So we made it just have an equipment type of T and it actually worked out very nicely. I had forgotten we did that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Zoof. Uh, it's just a joke. Um, so the 10x engineer, uh, I'll explain what that actually is. Um, when people say 10x engineer, they're talking about like, you know, like the the engineer that gets like 10 times as much work done as someone else. Uh, right now on, on the internet, uh, there's a bit of a backlash because uh, someone tweeted about the the 10x engineer and like ways of identifying the 10x engineer and essentially uh described this as um they they described the 10x engineer as um basically you know as things along the lines of you know their i x and f keys will be worn down on their keyboard and they're gonna have like dark backgrounds on their computers and, and stuff like that and like some of them were like okay yeah they're they're gonna get stuff done really fast and they don't like meetings and and you're like okay like i mean most people don't like meetings like <laughs> who likes meetings meetings take you away from getting your work done um like when a meeting's required yeah i go to a meeting and i meet with the people i discuss we hash things out we figure things out but like you keep the meeting short because it's keeping everybody from getting their work done. That's so the the problem is that in a lot of cases the type of developer that was actually being described in a lot of those are um, usually toxic. Uh, like there's 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 some toxic behaviors there. So like uh, they talked about shunning other people and not wanting to to sh you know to mentor them and, and share their information. And I kind of said I'm like, oh, that is the opposite of the type of person I want on my team. I want my team to have people that are sharing knowledge with everyone else so that they bring up everyone else. Because they talk about like the 10x engineer. It's like, okay, this person gets 10 times as much work done as anybody else. So do I hire the 10x engineer or do I hire six engineers of which each one of them doubles the productivity of everyone else? I'm going to take the, the team where everyone is increasing everyone else's productivity. Space butts, uh, show us your I and X keys already. Well, none of the keys on my keyboard are worn off, but yeah. So also the funny thing is people also realized I, X, and F? Like, is he talking about like the classic single letter variable names getting worn down? Like, I'm, I'll maybe give you I, but even I don't type that because it auto-completes it most of the time. Like, I, like... I'm using tools that autocomplete. Why would I type I so often? So that's the funny thing is like even the scenario that he's talking about, it's like, well, I don't. And those are bad variable names. We should write longer ones that actually express the meaning. So that's all it was. It's a funny joke. The Internet's kind of kind of going over it. Uh, and Yazoo, uh, so if you are um, if you are actually uh, a new grad that uh, um, you're looking for uh, work that is awesome. So welcome to the developer community. Uh, good luck. Hopefully, uh, if, you, if you've got questions, feel free to ask us. We'll be glad to help. There's a lot of us. Uh, as I always point out to everyone, uh, I am the host of Dev Chatter, but Dev Chatter really is a community of developers. Uh, so um, well, welcome to the community. And I need to restart the bots. Oh, I need to figure out why it disconnects. Uh, so. We, we have not actually messed with our old chatbot that we built last year in a long time. Uh, my guess is that it's something to do with the fact that all the APIs over on Twitch have since changed, deprecated, and everything like that uh, since we last uh, actually worked on that bot. So it every once in a while just disconnects and we just have to reconnect it to Twitch and it runs again. Don't, don't know. We haven't messed with it. Uh, one of these days we're gonna go actually make it work again but until that point I'm just gonna restart it when it disconnects cuz it does it like once a stream and we restart it and then it's back up yay the other bots alive so link to the discord which by the way is also down below there are actually a lot of links that are to interesting things down below uh, to our discord github 
Uh, and uh, for anyone else that's wondering, especially if you're a beginner developer, um, I started a YouTube series. So first off, our YouTube actually contains the archives of all of our past episodes. So there are over 200 episodes over on our YouTube uh, channel uh, of live coding streams. Uh, but I've also started doing Dev Chatter Basics, where we uh, basically it's a just you know a, a fairly short episode where we just talk about some you know programming concept uh, at a level that'll help build foundations of understanding for uh, developers. So if you're so inclined, those exist. Okay, let's take a look. So this is our, this is the code uh, that we are doing. Um, you have a laser trash kill and needed. Uh, okay, so actually ours is better than this. Ours is better than this. Let's pull this. The equipment command. Whoops. <clears throat> we don't yet have our payment processor. However, when we pass it in, equipable settings cost, so that's what goes right there, uh, and then the allow override is going to be inside of here. So it's this one. Oh, actually, that was funny. It's gonna be the same one because it was popper because of popper and equipment. Um, yeah, Renee. I, I yes, it it uh, very much could be. We also use some undocumented APIs of theirs, so it could be something with that. We're fairly careful about making sure that we catch exceptions on those. Um, I've got a log file running on it. We'll see if it can, if if there's any like when we actually dig into it, I'll look at the log file and see what's been failing. I bet it's telling us in there. <laughs> but I'm not kidding when I say like all I do is I just run it and I haven't looked at it. So it's it's not a big deal. One of these days we'll go fix it. That day is not today. Um payment processor. Payment processor. Save that as field right there it'll be a private payment processor and it runs right here and does that so that code replaces this code we'll fix those in a second uh, do we still need this we do not need that and these values now come from here amount paid amount paid so this is hey uh, they paid something let's go ahead and return them their money uh, so this is if we if we did not actually do the operation return the money to them I might shift that into a payment processor as well we'll find out um, Don't know yet. Okay, so we added that to this. So let's go ahead and jump over to the weapon command, which needs to have that. Because it needs to go comma payment processor. And accessory command. It's gonna get the same treatment. Payment processor and come a payment processor this inherent this is the problem with uh with inheritance right here that we're seeing this well one of the problems with inheritance is shown right here and that i'm having to make this change at every one of these spots uh where where this was, was used because of the way we did this uh, but the nice thing is it's only on this set all the other ones work fine and only need this added to the constructor and they don't need to actually pass it on to the the following constructor because we didn't inherit so this has actually simplified some of our code so it adds a little bit to these ones but simplifies a lot of our other code so there's there's a bit of a balance on those things there we go we knew this was gonna happen 
Um, new payment processor. Uh, do I really have these all separated out like this? Oh man, I should change this. Uh, payment processor gets the gill bank, and we've got to have the Twitch client, right? Is that the Twitch client? That's the Materia Accessor. Oh, chat. Okay. Chat.object. There it is. Okay. So I should be able to do this same thing in these ones as well. Uh, where did I line break? Here. Why is this not extracted? I really need to extract that. That's... Um, I'll probably fix this right after this. I want to add it first, that way uh, I don't have both the addition and a change happening in the same thing. Uh, interface I equipment command parameters. Uh, Voight, we could technically make something that was the uh, that, that was along those lines if we wanted to ex ex like bunch those into one set and only have to pass one parameter, um, and then make an object that did that. Uh, we could probably get away with that, and it would probably work pretty well. Okay. Um, whoops. Meant to click this one. Okay, so that is adding the payment processor, adding the payment processor, adding the payment processor, and adding the payment processor, and then this is adding it in and fixing it in those spots. So the equipment command added it in and used it instead of the existing transaction check. All right, let's... So we've got some of those pieces in there, but let's go ahead and give it a, a run and we'll see what we get. Here we go. Connect. And it's live and we're gonna change the menu to default just because it looks a little bit nicer. So we recently ran the popper command, which is why our gill is set to two. Uh, let's go ahead and watch cloud here. So we're gonna say weapon cloud 10. Nail bat. So there we go. Uh, so we've been equipped with a nail bat. Um, I don't remember what the cost of that is. So uh, anyone uh, is, is anyone here in chat uh, willing to type a command for me? Uh, I want you to do the same command but with a different number, but I want you to type first uh, so I can give you the money to actually run the command. Alright, uh, average guy wins. There you go, average guy. <clears throat> Go ahead and run a uh, weapon command, if you would please. Hey, hey, there you go. Good choice. Ultima weapon. Uh, average guy, check your gill balance, if you would please. So just do exclamation point gill, and uh, we'll find out how much money you've got left over after that. Uh, 9,000. That sounds about right. So apparently we charged 1,000 for ultima weapon. That sounds right. Uh, nope. Um. Ultimate weapon? A thousand. Yep, that's the default value for it. So, yeah, you got charged. Cool. Uh, yeah, Mr. Sh Mr. Shoji. Uh, we are, we are, I believe we're guarded against, uh, invalid stuff. So, for example, uh, weapon cloud 16. See? You gotta pick the one of the ones that's actually valid. We did a lot of stuff with those, uh, so setting them back to zero will. Uh, whoops. Weapon cloud zero. It helps if I type it right, but that'll switch us back to a Buster Sword. So yep, all kinds of fun stuff on there. But that code generally seems to be working. Uh, and I'm not too terribly concerned with uh, with checking armlet, weapon, and accessory because it literally is running the same code, and I happen to know that. So, uh, at least for cost, uh, there's not there is zero difference on how the cost is factored in. Uh, unlike with like, 
you know, how it's actually changed and things like that. That's a different part of the code. We didn't touch that part of the code. Uh, yeah, so, uh, exactly, yes. Uh, well, uh, so actually, Mr. Shoji, what's happening is um, there is one equipped. It's not in your inventory, uh, but when you unequip one, when you change, we do put the one you removed into your inventory. So uh, the nice thing is you can also affect materia. So um, we, we, we can also just add materia. So uh, materia, uh, I don't know. 15. I don't know what material 15 is. Double cut, apparently. So, whoops. I meant to go to materia. So, congratulations, Cloud. You now have double cut. So, what's materia 85? N Neo Bahamut. There we go. Congratulations, buddy. Didn't didn't expect that one, did you? All kinds of free stuff. So, uh, we, we have commands for, for various just, just different things to be able to manipulate the game. Uh, the cool part is um, things like... Those are, are in the list there. If I add, uh, you know, Materia 20, Materia, uh, I don't know, 21, Materia 5... There you go. So it just like adds them in uh, for for any material that you want to add, all all through chat commands. Now, uh, obviously, because I am the streamer, uh, the the game does not charge like our program does not charge me to add those. Uh, Mr. Shoji, on the other hand, did not get a reply, but should have. So we're gonna add the payment processor to that to make sure that Mr. Shoji gets a reply with that because uh, 38 was probably valid. Uh, but you just didn't have the money to do it, would be my guess. And, uh, oh, blank. Oh, my God. Oh, that's horrifying. Uh, I need to figure out what to do with that. There's one that's blank. That's funny. Coin? Coin? Yeah, I must not have had that one. I thought I, uh, I thought I actually did have them. I might not have all the materia. Might not be in there. I did all the items and uh, and weapons and everything like that. Uh, but I must not have done materia yet. So apparently, I need to do materia. So yeah. Either way, I have a solution to that one. Yeah, I actually have all the lists of all the materials and everything like that to uh, Mr. Shoji. Um, what else is blank? Uh, let's see, so 22 is blank, 38 is blank, is that the one we just used? 45, 46, and 47 are blank. So, yeah, there are a bunch of, uh, of blank ones in there. Uh, I just have not added the materia info in there yet. Which is actually a good point. Maybe I should disable the materia command until, like, uh, by default until we have those in there. Uh, I do want to get them in quickly, though, so we're not sitting around without that done. <clears throat> um, payment processor added the armlet weapon, and okay, so uh, extract uh, payment processing from equipment commands. Okay. Let's go take a look at the materia command. Since we're talking about that one, might as well. Uh, but also they're not always blank depending on mods. New threat adds a bunch more, for example. Yeah, so Mr. Shoji, my plan for uh, various mods, if, if someone is running them, uh, we'll come up with ways of, of including the mod data. Um, it, what that might mean is that we should work with them, uh, but we might not be able to uh, affect the stuff that they use if they use blank spaces that exist. <clears throat> yeah, definitely, definitely something there. Oh yeah, wow! I didn't even pull out the materia command words yet. That is hilarious. Um. Yep, it's not even in here. Okay.
Okay, so Materia command words. We're going to allow Materia. <clears throat> and if you're wondering, you're probably sitting there thinking, Brendan, why do you have this list of, of all these various words? Well, I'm glad you asked. These are actually the default values in the program. And if someone goes to the settings page, they'll actually see these in a list and be able to modify them. And uh, they'll be able to add whatever additional words they want. So if they really want, if, if they don't like, uh, may, maybe they don't like give being the command here because that overlaps with their other bot that has a give command, they don't have to use it. They can remove that one. If they don't want gil to be the command for this one, they can tell people they have to check the balance. Or maybe they want bal or a bunch of their users are, are checking the, you know, running a different command, or they can't remember that it's name bids instead of name bid. Well, congratulations, you can make, which actually I'm just gonna put name bid in here because I tons of people type that one in. Uh, so <laughs> you can do this kind of stuff of just customizing. Uh, or, or they can't spell. Yeah, so Miha's right. Uh, for example, if they can't spell the word palette, uh, I in fact made it by default you can either type palette correctly, or you can do two L's, one T, two L's, two T's, or one L, one T. So palette's a hard word to spell, especially if you're not a native English speaker. Heck, even if you are a native English speaker, that's a hard word to spell. So congratulations. We accept uh, all those variations. Uh, you could obviously add more if you thought you needed them. Okay, so we've got materia and um, about mats. And just in case people uh, have autocomplete on, we'll allow material. <laughs> and, and we're covered for anyone that's running autocomplete. Or uh, I should say, um, um, words, uh, autocorrect, that's the word I was going for, autocorrect. There we go. Jump down here. Duplicate that. There and there. Boom. Boom. Material command words. Jump back over to the command. And now we say x dot materia command words. There we go. So now the materia command is based on those values instead of being uh, just hard coded in here. <clears throat> Mm. Caffeine. We will turn this caffeine into code. Just give it time. Oh, we're not even charging for caff uh, for um, <clears throat> materia yet, are we? Um, no, we totally don't. Yeah, we don't even have a cost on these yet. Yeah, I am so not done with, uh, <laughs> so not done with Materia. <clears throat> In the config, do you need to change a method too? Uh, Janisku is, is correct. This is, in fact, Max Taste. Uh, Renee, what were you, what were you uh, wondering about? I want to make sure that I get whatever um, whatever it was. Oh, oh, okay. So I don't have okay. So I don't have costs, but uh, materia is currently limited to only the uh, only the moderators and uh, the broadcaster can actually run this command. Uh, so that's why Mr. Shoji could not add materia. Remove all equipment still for materia? <clears throat> no? No, I don't think so. Don't know what you mean, Renee. I won't worry about it, though. If you uh, if you do come up with what what the actual thing is that's the problem, we'll we'll fix it. Basically, what I need to do 
for materia is the same thing that I did here for items. Uh, and that is actually set it up so that we have like an object that declares what's the what is the ID that we'll use for it in the system, which for you know the weapons we use these. So these are Tifa's weapons. These are the costs of them. Uh, and then elsewhere in our program, we actually have the the words that you can use to describe them as well. Uh, so uh, if you you know if you wanted to say leather glove, for example, you don't put it in like this. Uh, it would be like without a space would be the idea. I think we'd allow these two, but uh, I can't recall. In the config dictionary file, but I may have seen it wrong. In 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 here. To do, add setting screen. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure, Renee. I'm not because I don't know what uh, I don't know what it would be checking. So, all right. So, materia mats material. That's materia command words. So we'll add in. Um, but materia command words in settings. Okay, so Materia doesn't yet have a cost, so we won't even worry about that one yet. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's just add it. We'll, we'll give it its cost. Uh, no, because then I have to define all the Materia. No, we're not doing it today. We're not doing it today, because I don't want to go create that, that items list that we had that lists all the items. We're not doing that today. That's a pain in the rear. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, 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 Renee, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I do know what you're talking about now. Uh, command settings. It is right here. So this. So, all right, here's the trick. When you're in the settings, whenever you, well, here, I'll run it and I'll show you. So the, the remove all duplicates uh, that's in here is just a, like a, it's hard to explain. It's like a, it's, it's not not an ideal way to do it, but it's not bad. So, for example, um, this is this is kind of small on the screen, but the balance command, uh, where someone types in exclamation point gill, let me go ahead and run this over here. They could do balance or they could do gill, and uh, those are the those commands are the same thing. Now the funny thing is, balance gets responded to by another bot, hence why gill is also a way of saying that. Um, if I were to say um, gill balance, now all of a sudden I can type exclamation point gill balance, and that's another valid way of, of running that same command. To totally legit. <clears throat> if, however, I were to come up here to the costs command, and I try to put in the word gill, ooh, oh, that's not doing a... Ah, I've got a problem. I gotta go fix that. Yeah, we can totally get away with it that way. Uh, so I need to I need to fix that. We've got a small bug there, but the idea is I can't add gill to this one because it's already taken somewhere else. Um, I can't come down to help and write refresh, for example. It'll just remove it because it says, hey, that's already being used by something else. Now, probably what we should do is let them know that we removed it, but... I at least want us to be safe. So that's the safety we put in there that basically says you can't have two commands that respond to the same word. Um, we might at some point make a type of command that runs other commands, but that needs to be intentional. We don't want to just have them both run by the coincidence that you gave the name because we wouldn't know the order to run them or anything like that. So there's a lot of complexity that we don't want to deal with. So we're just like, no, you can't have the same name. Like, <laughs> not a, not okay. So, 
that's the idea. <clears throat> so let's go ch take a look at this, because, um, uh, yeah, um, Yeah, that, that, uh, we should probably just too lower these values. Should probably just too lower all these values. Uh, House Bazook! Uh, thank you for making that house call to our stream. And, uh, we are glad that you are here. Thank you for the, uh, the resub. Uh, glad, glad you're enjoying it. Uh, you're welcome. So, okay. So for now, I'm just actually going to toss this in here. Uh, fix the uh, casing uh, issue. Uh, this needs to be case insensitive. Uh, so we'll we'll create a unit test for that and fix that sometime later. Note to fix case in uh, case sensitive check so let's see now that we know that we're not fixing that one right now let's go ahead and take a look uh, so there's the cost command the base command the balance command the armlet command the accessory command we did all those uh, the cost command, the equipment command, we did those. Give gill command, that, yeah. Item command, we did not do the item command. Uh, so the basic item command, uh, where does it... Uh, we have this one locked down also. Uh, do we not have all the costs listed on items? I think we do. Yeah, we have costs on all the items. We can allow other people to use it now. Assuming that the feature's enabled. Uh, item settings enabled. Yeah, uh, okay, so step one. Let's do what we did before and make another command settings. So we need to make one for the item command, which we're going to put right next to the material command. So we're going to say underscore item, item command words. We're going to allow item, items. Add item. Oh, that's a good idea. Hang on. Add materia. Um, because I could see someone typing that in. We'll just make it work. That's good enough. I. I. Doop. Whoops. Double up the top one. Double up the top one. Doop. Doop. There we go. Now inside of the item command, we can say x dot item command words. So there we go. So if you're here, uh, House Bazook, how you been? How are things? And uh, that goes for anybody else in chat, too, by the way. So we said if is allowed to use the command, but we don't need that anymore. We now want to do uh, one of these. Dunk. And we don't have a payment processor yet, but that's fine. <coughs> um... Item settings allow mod. Allow mod. Uh, the item cost is going to be based on the item. Right. So we need to get the item first. So 
So... We need to get the item. Um, if item equals null return, this needs to go right after that and say charge us the cost based on uh, item dot default price. No, not default price. Oh, crap. It's not default price. It needs to be based on the price that they have in theirs. We cannot add it yet. So, if they didn't get an item, return the item. We'll just put in the item name and get rid of that. We'll no longer do that. So we're gonna, if if we didn't have the item, we're not even gonna try to add it. Um, the item ID. Add one of them. Do that. Okay. Um, maybe we'll make that a parameter at some point. Um, okay. So here's the challenge that we ran into. I want to give a quick explanation for anybody that's wondering. Um, also, uh, uh, Narco, welcome. Thanks for that follow. Much appreciated. Uh, let me see. What did Spartan say? I assume the 10x engineer stuff is because of the Twitter blow up. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly, Spartan. Uh, the 10 engineer thing in the title, that is a joke based on the, uh, on the Twitter, uh, stuff that's blowing up. I thought it would be funny to just toss 10x engineer into my, uh, into my title for today. I thought it'd be good. <clears throat> Clear, clearly, uh, clearly, 10x developers all the way. Uh, they're they're by far the best developers. All the 10x developers. So, ten, ten, uh, oh yeah, Miha, what is this? I'm a ten, I, I can't be a 10x developer. I'm sharing knowledge with other developers. Clearly not. I'm I'm clearly not the kind of developer that you want on your team because why would we want developers that that help other developers on the team? That's just crazy talk. Okay, so I was going to do that, but here's the challenge. Um, I was going to grab the cost based on what we have in the system, but the problem is that is the default cost. We need to add in settings so that the streamer can alter those costs. Because I, when I saw the word default, I was like, yeah, just de wait a minute, I don't want default. Because default's not the right one. That's, you know, what Interactive 7, that's our program that we're building, that's what it just sets it to when someone starts up. If you are configuring this for your own settings, you are going to want to choose what the prices of different items are. And because of that, that means we need to be based on a settings value, not on an item value. So, that means we need to actually do a settings lookup instead of an items lookup. Uh, so, to do, make this lookup based on settings, not on the item. Because we need them to be able to configure what they want those costs to be. Because while I set the cost of uh, a, um, well, I set the cost of a potion at 25 bits, someone else might be like, you know what? I don't want anybody to be able to send me items real. Like I want to limit that, so they might set a potion to be a dollar, right? And uh, they can go in and they can just alter all of these values. Uh, and you know set it to whatever they like or they can just turn the whole feature off and just say no I don't want items at all um, and that's that's up to the streamer and uh, we want to make sure that our program can support that so add settings for all the things okay so this is uh, adding uh, command words for the uh, item command let's make sure it still works okay before we do that uh, Yes, exactly. Um, potions are like 10x heals. Uh, 
All right, we're looking at the items. So item add uh, one. Oh, did I? Wait, it is connected. Um, rip. Um, I must have done that look up wrong. I bet I looked at ID instead of item ID or something like uh, something along those lines. Item command execute uh, line 29, a singular default. Actually, let's let that continue because uh, it will. It was just uh, I just catch before it logs the exception because I want to be able to look. Line 29, singular default. Did I change that from something? What was it before? What? Uh, with ID one, yes. But I'm, I'm just surprised we didn't get the error before. We must not have checked it. Uh, it's supposed to be item ID. So item ID is checking item ID. Uh, we have we have a lot of items with ID one. Just because of the difference between an item and ID and an ID, an ID is based on its relevant, uh, like it's its ID within the type of item that it is, and then item ID is what its ID is in the item list, which are two separate IDs. Um, there's also equipment ID and other things like that. So there's various IDs for how they're used. So for example, uh, a buster sword when equipped is a different ID from a buster sword when it's in your inventory. Uh, so, and we do account for that. Uh, but item ID is the one that we wanted to look up. So item uh, one, added a high potion. That sounds right. So there's a high potion. Uh, no, uh, so that's actually not correct, Field Agreed. Uh, a single or default throws an exception if it found more than one, uh, which is the correct behavior, because we wanted this to throw an exception so I, the developer, could find out that there was a problem, because grabbing the first one would have been an issue. If you use first or default, it'll return the first one it finds. Uh, yes, what Mr. So Shoji is mentioning there. Uh, first or default's the one you're thinking of. So single or default and first or default, single throws an exception. So if there really is only supposed to be one, do a single so that it'll throw an exception you can find the error. Because the worst thing to do would be to have it still work, but not work right. And that's the, the, the really uh, problematic one. And yeah, there's also last or default. Because <laughs> there's also last. Uh, and there's also element at... Uh, at uh, there's element at... Or default as well uh, so you can do index based for all of these things but yeah that that seems to work again so hooray okay um, items command uses uh, uses man word there we go so we got that one fixed up Um, do, 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 do. what else needs changes to it? Status effects. This needs it. There we go. Status effect needs the change. Found the one that needed it. So status effect has a can override bit restriction and all that fun stuff, so we're going to switch it for this uh, and get rid of this code. The blank command cost that your balance, yeah. Okay, so 
So we need to do status cost, that's the cost. And the override is based on this one. So it's battle settings allow mod override. And then we don't need this anymore. Which means we don't need this anymore either. And we do need a payment processor, but we will not need the gill bank. Do we need still need the... Yes, we will still need it because we have some other responses that we make in this one. So let's go ahead and remove that parameter. And then payment processor, payment processor. And add that as a read-only field. And hooray! We now have our payments processed by the payment processor. Let's find out if we broke anything. We did not. Yay. Okay, let's go get into combat. <clears throat> that way we can actually see that working. <clears throat> Congratulations, uh, Mr. Shoji. Um, Wait, what? Invalid request on that? Well, it should have made you rich, but it didn't. Okay, here. Either way, let's run in here. We're gonna go ahead and trigger some combat. Speaking of triggering combat, let's get that menu color changing. Uh, I don't think there is one on the status effect command itself, Renee, which would be why we didn't uh, get a uh, broken uh, compile on that one. All right, we have nothing equipped, uh, so hang on. Um, oh, hang on, wait. Uh, hang on, before we do that, uh, there we go. Stop attacking so I can get my regens up. There we go. Um, yeah, dual fa dual's not enabled. I can turn it on if you want. Uh, and it's also probably expensive. Yeah, so look. Uh, Cloud has a barrier now, Mr. Shoji. See? <laughs> and the best part is you were able to just guess what it was called. Uh, for the status effect, that barrier would be one. <laughs> I forget if uh, if slow numb is one of them. Um, it might not. Uh, that might not be what that. Uh, did we did we include slow numb? I may not have included slow numb. Actually, why did I not include slow numb? I know I didn't include some of the game's statuses, like um, near death is not a status, and death isn't, and dead is not a stat. Like those are not statuses as far as this is concerned. You can't just inflict, you know, death on a character. But yeah, that's uh, that's the that's the thing there. But it seemed to work. You were able to do it, and that's good. So we swapped out core model payments for that. We got rid of the gill bank, replaced it with a payment processor. We ran that payment processor instead of that. So code went from 72 lines down to 63 lines, so not bad. Removed nine lines of code there. 
Not that removing lines of code is always the best metric, neither is adding lines of code, but I think these lines of code are better because uh, we, we decreased and uh, I think had better ones. Use payment processor for status uh, effect command. Very nice. I like it. Average length of line of code is a nice metric. Wheat law, that actually would not be a terrible metric. That'd be an interesting metric to say the least, but I don't think you could you could say definitively whether code was better or worse because of that. You could certainly say some, some lines of code, like some indicators, like some outliers, uh, could definitely help you with that because really long lines of code could indicate something that has a lot of dependencies, things like that. So there's a lot of information to glean from that, but yes, uh, yeah, exactly. It's something to look into. It's it's something that could be a problem. Uh, there are often instances where, uh, just due to the way that that like the type of program your your building works, you might have a couple of places where something that would normally be a code smell is acceptable. So, for example, um, uh, switching based on some value instead of using polymorphism to achieve the same result. Uh, is yes exactly code smells are acceptable they're spots to check and see if there's a problem so they need to be in the right place and used in the right way if you have those so for example the switch that I was talking about if the switch is at the entry point where you receive a value and that switch is how you are creating the objects that are then used for polymorphism for all the addi additional actions so it's one switch to not require switches throughout the rest of your application that is a good use of one uh, so that would be the idea. Um, yeah, so Mr. Shoji, I think what Wheatlaw is commenting about is one, like, really long line of code that, um, and breaking a statement into multiple lines in order to have better organization. I believe that Wheatlaw is still saying that that would be a code smell. And, and um, I would say that that, that that is something to at least check into because I get that as well, right? Like we we did that um, right when we used our payment processor. Like I broke that into three lines here uh, because you know I thought it read a little bit better. I mean I could have left it like this, but I think it's a little bit clearer as three lines, and so I went with three lines. So uh, yeah, we. <laughs> Uh, and yes, uh, so when I when I do link operations and I do like a dot where a dot single like all those kinds of things, I uh, I do I do that. <laughs> yeah, so so some people like doing this where you call the things and you put in the commands like that, so you could put them in like this, uh, or alternately we could do this. Uh, so there's a lot of ways of structuring this. Yeah. You're correct. I should have pulled command data down uh, so that it wasn't. So uh, you you are correct. I should have written it like like this, uh, or with all three of these in one line. Which actually this wasn't that bad with all three of them in one line like that. That's not too bad. <laughs> Thanks, Weedlaw. Yep, uh, but that is that is totally, totally valid. And there is something to be said for even like code organization, things like that. Uh, yeah, some smell is okay. Uh, we have some code where every inspection tool freaks out over, except we've not needed to touch it since we wrote it. Yeah, yeah, Renee is, is, is also hitting on another really, really important coding point uh, for anyone that is wondering. For certain parts of your application where it's going to be changed so infrequently, sometimes the the code that would otherwise be you know like it's smelly code sometimes that needs to get hidden away somewhere where it's not where no one else, like everyone's going to call it but nothing is going to change it in the future those are spots where it's usually okay to have a little bit of a code smell um so yes absolutely uh but yes mr shoji is correct uh fluent builders so for example if you are doing uh like if you are building up your service container uh, for your IOC container in, in well, .NET Core or any other IOC container that you might be using, a lot of times it's just chained uh, methods. So it's doing that fluent syntax where you're saying like, 
dot add you know tr you know um you know scoped whatever add what you know add transient whatever and you might like be registering all these dependencies and that is totally valid to be a single line be just because that's the structure you're doing now alternately instead of doing the single line chaining like that you could do individual statements for each one of those that and that comes down to preference the advantage of doing the individual statements is if you do happen to throw an exception you know what line it was thrown on uh, but if your exceptions are detailed anyway it doesn't make a huge difference so uh, yeah yeah so exactly what wheatlaw is mentioning uh you can chain the, you can chain them wheatlaw yep if, if you want, you can chain them, uh, because add stuff returns a service collection. <laughs> please, please don't just go chain them for the sake of chaining them. Uh, that seems crazy. Okay. Um, do, do, do. Let me click at the buttons. Click at the buttons. Okay, so, for anyone that hasn't seen it, because I know that I've got a handful of new people in here right now, um, I've actually started doing uh, a series on my YouTube channel, and that series is called Dev Chatter Basics, and for beginner programmers, as well as more experienced programmers, I am doing a series that is designed to cover the basics. So, we're just doing an episode on, on any given topic, that is, you know, something basic in in C sharp that uh, is is foundational and will help you just generally in your programming. Uh, so things you're going to run into all the time. So uh, today's episode was actually about uh, types in C sharp. So just you know, basic foundation, basic primer on understanding how like the the types in C sharp how they work. Uh, we're going to be doing an episode on interfaces, uh, probably that'll be our next episode, and the interfaces episode is going to be discussing things like uh, not only how, how interfaces work and how you use them, uh, but also when to use them and why, because uh, a lot of people wonder like, like okay, I kind of get what an interface is, but you know, like why do I use it? Like wh when is it useful to have an interface versus say a, a, a base class or an abstract base class for example, and uh, so we'll be, uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, remember, kids, only refactor when you can point to a feature you added if you broke... S only refactor when you can point to a feature you added if you broke something? Huh. Yeah, so anyway, um... Additionally, we talked about extension methods last week, uh, so those episodes are out there. Feel free to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, hello! Did I mention that all my videos are also archived on YouTube? So hi, future person that's watching this, you know, certainly not today because I don't publish them the same day because I have an affiliate agreement with Twitch that says I won't. Uh, so I don't. Uh, so these videos show up on YouTube as well. You can find those in the video section here on Twitch. Uh, so anyway, I figured I'd mention that because I have started doing that. It's a fun series. So uh, also I should mention anybody that's here in Twitch, make sure you click the follow button. That's how you get notified when our next episode is. Uh, speaking of our next episode, it should be on Monday. Uh, as I try to stream on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, but I... Uh, <laughs> I stream during like work hours because I think that is nice for a lot of developers uh, in in my time zone and close to my time zone that want to watch uh, like while they're at work and they'll have me on in the background while they're doing stuff. And then I know there are a lot of people that are uh, ahead of me in in you know in their time zone, and they'll watch you know in the evening and things like that. So I love my timing. I think it's really good. But occasionally I've got meetings and things that 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 mess it up, and uh, I try to work around that. So I always appreciate when everyone's able to be here. But as I said. Following is the best way to make sure that you are able to show up, because then you just, you know, get a little ping and, you, you know, you either ignore it or jump in. Uh, it's all up to you. So, it's good stuff. Um, and, yeah, uh, I also want to make sure that I mention that if you want to chat with me or any of the other Dev Chatter crew outside of the regular stream time, the best way to do that is to join our Discord. Uh, so, Discord is a chat application that is uh, really commonly used by gamers and Twitch streamers. And uh, you can check out our Discord at that link over there, as well as links down below. Uh, so it is, you know, 
as I said, gamers and Twitch streamers, but also it's used by open source projects just to collaborate and communicate. And uh, we have a lot of awesome people in there because, as I as I always say, Dev Chatters a community. I'm just the host of the uh, of the live stream, so you'll find uh, a bunch of people over there always chatting about interesting stuff. So uh, it's a good group of people, very friendly and welcoming. So um, that's the type of thing that we try to cultivate here. Uh, so as I said. Our next stream will be on Monday, uh, and it will start at, uh, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Coded Beard, coming in with a 13-month resub. I don't, I don't even know what to do with 13 months. Uh, but that is awesome, Coded Beard. Welcome to the stream. Good evening, indeed. Glad you made it. Uh, so what I was going to mention is that, um... If you look at your clock right now, subtract two hours. Uh, that is our start time on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, so that is 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and if uh, let's see, if you're uh, so let's say that you live in uh, in uh, that your time is currently British Summer Time, then that would be what 7 p.m. your time. So uh, if you're in Central European Summer Time, then that would be 8 p.m. your time. If you are on uh, the west coast of the United States, then we start at 11 a.m. your time. So that'll be our the time that we start on Monday. Uh, the Moody, uh, welcome and thank you for that follow. Much appreciated. Uh, will we have solids RPS Saturday again? Oh, uh, are we going to have solids Saturday? Uh, Wheat Lull. Um, I am not necessary. So I have not, I've not scheduled any solid Saturdays. Uh, that's not to say that I don't want to do them. Uh, we we could do a solid Saturday, I guess. So we'd have to have something to focus on. But yeah, uh, we, we could do those again. Um, so for anyone that's wondering, solid Saturdays, we would take one of these solid principles of object-oriented design. So that would be single responsibility principle, open-close principle, Liskov substitution principle, interface segregation principle, and the dependency inversion principle. And we would take one of those and we would make that our focus for the day. Uh, where we would first start off by discussing it and then we would just... Uh, you know, kind of focus on it. Uh, after we completed uh, Solid, we did the Dry Principle and some others. Uh, and yes, uh, so Wheat Law is correct. So we already have done Solid uh, as well as some other principles once, but we could uh, continue that, just choose another principle that we consider to be foundational, kind of like Solid, which is why that acronym works so well. And we could say, you know, <laughs> PHP best, best principle. Uh, we could say PHP best, best principle. That is true. Uh, Renee, you like the Solid Saturdays too. Okay, well, I will consider bringing those back uh, if, if people really like them. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm not planning on doing a PHP Saturday, by the way, because I don't know PHP. Uh, but um, I do want to roll these and... Uh, Please stick around, and uh, I want to thank our moderators, Crimson Green and SNB, for helping us out today. It was very useful. We had these wonderful people follow us today. So if you find your name on this list, I probably thanked you when you followed, but it is always appreciated all the same. Uh, and I want to thank our subscribers, Nylox, The Michael Jolly, House Basook, and Coated Beard. Uh, so thank you to all of you for uh, subscribing today uh, to answer Mr. Shoji's question. Uh, yes, I am U.S. based. That is why our stream is run on Eastern Time in the United States, uh, as I am in that time zone. Uh, I want to thank everybody for hanging out with us today. It was a really good stream, and uh, I, I had a lot of fun with it. We got a lot of good stuff done. Uh, so if you missed the beginning of it, remember this is recorded, so you could check out the beginning. The main focus of the day was to take a look at the... Uh, some code that we had duplicated through a couple of things and discuss whether it made more sense to pull it into a base class or whether it made more sense to compose it. And we talked about what would happen either way and we ended up doing the, the composition based approach which if you've ever heard people say favor composition over inheritance, that is why. So, uh, and if you check the earlier part of the video, you will see that. So again, it's recorded here on Twitch. If you go to the video section, it's literally already there. You could actually start watch. like, if you come to an episode late, you could actually just go watch that. You can interact as well, so uh, it's usually best to watch live streams live, but hey, if you really wanted to see the beginning, you can. Uh, so, what else are people saying in here? Uh, you are welcome for the stream, everyone. It was a lot of fun. Um, didn't notice the time. Yeah, no problem, Mr. Shoji. Uh, yes, the, the panel schedule will convert to your time zone. 
Uh, and uh, it's probably not converting to GMT. It's probably converting to BST, uh, Mr. Shoji. Uh, and uh, yes, we also have the schedule command, which I don't remember if that's... Uh, I don't remember if that's working right, Genescu. I don't remember. <laughs> but either way, uh, as I said, I will catch all of you on Monday. It'll be an awesome stream that we have then. So uh, take care. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Do something fun. And uh, the um, I guess we will. Uh, yeah, we'll. Uh, well, um, I don't know. What, I'm not sure what we're going to do on Monday, but it'll be something fun. Might be uh, might be more uh, of the Final Fantasy VII interaction stuff. Who knows? Uh, either way, have a great rest of your weekend, and I will see you on Monday. Happy coding, everyone.